Do I ask questions too? Are y'all mainly asking yeah. questions? Or like yeah, we're talking. Whatever, right. whatever, whatever comes across your mind. I like to think um, that it's kind of like we're all at a bar. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you like know you have something. Is this shit recording right now though? Like, yeah. Camera? Oh, it is. Oh, so we're actually like going. We're in. Because okay. it's, it's just rolling. So we can start the w- yeah. wherever, you know. Already. Yeah, I'm going to back this up a little bit. But yeah, welcome in. Nice. MJ Theory Show, episode 62. Sorry. First mobile pod. We're uh, at the Gentleman's Grooming Barbershop down in Kyle, Texas right now. Shout out, the owner with us right now, Mr. Chris. I don't know his last name. I'm sorry, Chris. Ortiz. Ortiz. I could have guessed that. Man. Damn it. What, Ortiz. I'm not gonna, the I'm Wi Fi password? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> you know. He was tipped off. But yes, yes. <laughs> Yo, this my is, man. This you, is, miss, uh, you missed the ghost walking out the door and, and, and <laughs> forgot my last name. Dude. Stuff, stuff. No, no, no. He was doing uh, quintessential work. You for didn't the know that. You itself. didn't know that was your task, though. So I wasn't ready. I think. I, wasn't I, ready think, for the I, ghost think I think if we would have told you, like, "Hey, bro, guard this shit," you, I'm pretty sure that, I would have been on it. Yeah, that motherfucker <laughs> wouldn't have slipped by. Even if he was supernatural, you would have felt the temperature change or something mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that. It's like something's off here. That motherfucker yeah. just walked by. They got cold something. as shit. Yeah, we had a dude walk into the barber shop, and then he's like, "Can I use the restroom?" And then crazy, right? Yeah. No one saw him. I didn't see him come back out. I didn't see him legitimately. There's one child who's out. claimed to have seen him. Yeah, <laughs> I don't see believe that kid. Hey, but maybe you know what? Maybe because they say kids have like a sixth sense or some kind of shit like yeah. that. Yeah, maybe they're a little have bit more. Have you ever seen open. that movie? Hell sense? yeah, that's yeah. a good movie. Creepy ass movie. Once a, once a year, I will watch Sixth Sense and um, The Fifth Element. I don't, oh I'll, yeah, I just stack those together. You yeah. know, the number of movies with Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fifth and the sixth. Speaking of Bruce Willis, he's he's not doing too good, right? No, I heard not. What do you mean, like like uh, he has his health? Type of illness. He's got a yeah. he's got an illness where his eyes can't register like stuff, but he's not blind, but he can't read scripts anymore. I don't think. All right, it's and like blurry or. I think he he can't, and I think he can't see faces. Is what it is. It's mm. crazy. Bro. Faces in particular are blurry, like visual distortion. Yeah. Or something. What the hell? Yeah, we could um. Just, just so we clarify for everybody right here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Hey, what is going on with Bruce Willis's health? <laughs> Oh, for some reason, I had I had Tom Hanks pictures in my mind. Okay, no, Bruce Willis. Okay, Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis's health. Die Bruce hard. Willis. Die hard. Six cents. Okay. Well, okay, wow. That's not good. Nope. <laughs> Couldn't tell nope. you. I, I ain't a doctor. Prayers and thoughts, though. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. T's and P's all day. And Sadly prayers. enough, I'm not on the Wi-Fi after talking about it so much. <laughs> the, you, got, you got the Wi-Fi password? Uh, I don't have it, but... Then also Siri didn't quite pick up what I was saying. I was gonna say because don't you gotta say Siri first, dude? For the most part, what I'll do is I hold my hold button and then I just say whatever. Oh, How old is Andy Dal- Dalton? You know mm-hmm. what's wrong with Bruce Willis? And it's just like bloop 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 bloop, and it just answers my question right away. Okay, I guess an update. Like no Google, I don't have no to go Siri type anymore. anything. I'm just yeah. like hold the hold button and then ask him my question. Oh yeah, I think that's the future. Future that's man. Dope. So y'all said this is y'all's sixty. 60 seconds. So this is number 62. This is 62 right 62 here. deep. Let's 62. go. 61, we had Nick and Ace on, and now our second guest of all time. Yeah, tell us a little bit about where we're at. So right now we are um, in the barbershop. Yeah. Uh, like you said, Gentleman's Grooming 101 here in downtown Kyle, Texas. And um, yeah, man, this is my second home. You know, it's your baby. This is my baby for sure. Yeah, we're um, not just at a barbershop. No, we're, we're not at, at a random barbershop. Y'all. We're at we're, my This is barbershop. his barbershop. Yes, his is, barbershop as well. This is my. my <laughs> <laughs> it's both our barbershops, but yes, yeah. yeah, this is my business. This is my barbershop. This is my baby. Um, how long has it been, man? How long has it has it we been here? Yeah, we've been in this location now for almost nine years. Nine years in this spot, but mm-hmm. it's been longer. I guess. I've, yeah. This spot previous. So I'm uh, thirty three. When I opened my business, I was 22, about to be 23. So, yeah, that was in 2013. Mm-hmm. You 10, 11 years? Yep. I graduated high school in 2013. Oh, man. Yep. That's a good so, year. That's yeah, a man. <laughs> good 10 year. years ago. Yeah. Started started the business when I was really young, early 20s. Um, and uh, it was it was crazy. It was been a journey. Right. Been a journey. A lot of trial and error, man. I was like, you, you were cutting hair before that, I'm sure, right? I was cutting hair. I started cutting hair at 16. Um, started in my mom's bathroom. And on like uh, your brothers, like your homies or what? On well, the first the first cut I did was on one of my cousins, Anthony. Shout out to my, my cousin Anthony. We had a the story the backstory behind that is um we had fucking went to uh I don't know if y'all remember uh, a place 
back in the day. I don't know if they have. I think they have a couple more open still, but they were called Fast Freddy's. Did y'all fast ever? Freddy's. Hear, y'all, y'all like remember a fast food spot? No, no, no. It was a, it was a haircut spot. Oh, okay. It's called Fast Freddy's. Oh no, I yeah. Heard about that. Uh-huh. And um, it was typically like a bunch of Spanish women that worked there. Um, sometimes they'd have like some Asian cats. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, anyways, we had went to, we had went to Fast Freddy's, and back in the day, um, the style was like. You get like a one or a two on top with like a high fade, you know, not too much detail. Like in today's styles now, it's like, you know, longer hair on top, you mm-hmm. know, whether you're doing a slick back or the crop top look or even like, you know, styles where it's just long flowy hair all around, like not even a fade. Yeah, the long flowy hair is really in style right now. But back then it was like one, two, maybe three on top. <laughs> really? It's high skin fades, right? Yeah. This was like in 2006 or some kind of shit like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Anyway, so we went. Number two on top. <laughs> so, number two, scissor cut on top. That was the move for me. So that's number two on the side? Yeah, yeah. And a scissor cut on Okay. Well, yes. Back then, bro, it was like, yeah. Two on top. Super, super short <laughs> on top. Cracked. Super short on top. Like, t- like a T.I. fade or something like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So we had went to we had went to Fast Freddy's. And um, I had got with the, the girl who had always cut my hair. She was cutting my hair. And my cousin was being impatient that day. And he went to this, to this new barber that they had, our stylist. Because I don't even think it was barbers that worked there. Um. <laughs> it was this. It was this Asian cat. I can't remember his fucking name. I don't remember his name, but uh, I was getting my cut, and he's sitting like across from me, mm-hmm. and I'm watching him get his cut. And uh, man, his fade just kept going higher oh, no. and higher <laughs> and higher. And I remember looking at this motherfucker, and I was like, "Damn, you are getting fucked. You're up. getting chopped up, bro. And, uh, You're like 16." <laughs> Bro, yeah, I was like sixteen. He's How old is demolished 16. over there. He he was probably like a little younger. No, nah, he's older than me, bro. Oh, so shit. right now, right now he no. just turned. I think he's. I think he's forty. I think he's forty. So he's like six or seven years older. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's he's a little older than me, and uh, so yeah, I remember him getting done with his cut, bro, and uh, he showed him the mirror, <laughs> and. He fucking paid and took off straight to the straight to the car, bro. Oh no! Uh, I remember I remember getting into the truck to his truck, and he was just like pissed. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we got home, and um, I had my grandfather. Uh, rest in peace to my grandfather, man. You know RP. he uh, he had some some fucking Conair Clippers, and uh, yeah, I was fucking trying to fix his shit, you know. And uh, I, I I made it. I did a decent job, you know what I'm saying? With what like, you had. Yeah, I did a decent job. You know, at that time, mm. I was already interested in cutting hair. Um, I was, I would watch my barber, uh, Irvin. His name's Irvin, and uh, I would watch him on Saturdays when I get my cut. I would just sit while I was waiting for my haircut. Back then, you didn't do no appointments. There was no appointments back then, so you had to go in and you had to fucking wait. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody. And my guy, bro, he was, uh, he was super dope. You know, but it was in a small town in Lockhart. I don't know if y'all know where that's at. Yeah, there's a Lockhart Airport. It's like an hour away, right? Lockhart with barbecue, the barbecue yeah. man. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We so, went there for uh, my fiance's family reunion. Okay, well, so yeah. he had a barbershop in Lockhart, and um, of course, he was the best barbershop in this small town, so he was always he was always jam-packed. And Saturdays, I'd get dropped off, and I'd be there most of my Saturday, you know, from like 6 to 7 a.m. until, you know, 2 or 3 in the afternoon when he would close. And um, that's where I would that's where I would watch. I would watch mm. him cut. Um, I probably watched him cut hair probably two or three years before I even started to experiment myself. Wait, so hold on, were you getting your hair cut every Saturday yourself? Every every Saturday, or every Saturday or every other Saturday, I would okay. be getting my cut. Nice, that's you fire. Know? That's fire. And Take at, notes. And at <laughs> that time, <laughs> that's fire. Haircuts were like twelve bucks back then, bro. Oh yeah, you know. Well, so that, you're saying it's extremely cheap. It was well, or was you look the dollar at it now, different back then? But of course, in, before inflation right. went crazy, yeah. yeah, you know that 12, 12 bucks. You know that was that was you know that's a great price, right? It's a great <laughs> but, price. And but back in that market, it was kind of you know it was kind of steep a little bit, right? right. But um, maybe like twenty dollars now. Mm-hmm. But I started working at like the age of fifteen, so at that time I was already paying for my cuts. So that's why I was going every week, every two weeks. Nice. So you're working at this time. I was yeah. I started I started working at fifteen is when I started. Well, what would you? Did someone tell you you needed to get a job or you wanted to? No, somebody? man, I just, man, bro, I always, I wanted to be fresh in school. You know what I'm saying? I wanted, mm-hmm. I wanted a nice, I wanted a nice fit. I was a big shoe fanatic. I, you know, love me some uh, shoes, bro. Back then, bro, is, uh, I rocked a lot of Air Forces, like the exclusive Air Forces, though, not just like your white or black Air Forces, like 
you know, the exclusive colorways, so the, line to get. Um, the different materials. Some forces came in like crazy materials, you know. Uh, mm. But anyways, back to my haircut story. Uh, so, yeah, I, w- I would watch my my barber almost every Saturday, every other Saturday for half half of the day. And um, yeah, man. So when that day when my cousin got fucked up, <laughs> that was the first time I actually, you know, put like used put it in on someone's head, <laughs> used, used what I was watching on yeah. someone's head, you know. And, uh, you know, like I say, it, it wasn't much to fade already because he was his shit was already short, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was a cool first experience, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's how it started was from my cousin. And then, um, then I started doing it on some homies at the, at the, at my high school and eventually started, uh, you know, getting other random kids from the school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of, one of the things that I used to have to do because, uh, you know, a lot of cats didn't trust me in the beginning, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, at that time, I mean, still to this day, I still play basketball, but at that time, basketball was like my first love, you know, like that was, uh, that was my dream, you know, in my okay, head, I'll be go. like, I'm, I'm going to be an NBA player. You know, that was my, you know, that was my fucking goal, That's you it. you know, even though it was, I fucking stopped growing at like, I don't know, <laughs> five, eight or whatever, but, but you, you know, know, I loved, I loved, you I loved, I loved basketball, know? you know what I'm saying? I refuse to believe that that matters. So like, really want it. so I, you know, bro, like I was, I was pretty good back then, you know, yeah. and, uh, I'm I'm all right still, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't get it mistaken. But <laughs> Come on. you know, back then that's all I did was was hoop. Hoop, hoop, hoop. So what I had to what uh thing that I started doing to gain clients is um I would challenge I would challenge kids in the in the school and I'd be like, Look, we'll play one on one. If I lose, I'll you know, I'll pay you whatever, you know, ten, twenty bucks, whatever. But if I win, y'all you have to let me you know, experiment on your head. You know, you have to let me give, give you a haircut. Cut. And nine times, nine times out of ten, of course, I'd, I'd win, bro. You know, and uh, that was a cool little, you know, a cool little thing I had yeah, to do yeah, back then yeah. to, you know, that's branding. Uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Like marketing. I just had to think outside Both. the fucking box, you know. And uh, that was fun, bro. You know, I get, I get to, you know, hoop on a kid, ball on a kid, and at the same time gain a client. You know, so yeah, that yeah, was dope, lit. man. You know, but just part of the journey, you know, mm-hmm. just part of the journey, man. Yeah, it's lit as hell, bro. That's like uh, it's tight because like, I started. When, whenever you do a haircut, it's like people have the or people wear that. You know what I'm saying around their school, around the town. Yeah. So it's like advertising as well. For you know sure. Every time. For sure, man. Oh, oh yeah. The secret to my success with the haircut has been Chris all along. People <laughs> ask me not <nonstop. laughs> to. People ask me all the time, especially the day I get a haircut. People are like, "Yo, what's going on here? I don't. Well, what, what? What? Where are you getting this at? Yeah, and I've had I've had to tell so many people like, man, my barber is like an hour away. So if you want to go to Kyle though, he'll get you right for sure. Yeah, he's out there. But I've probably had over a hundred people ask me who my barber is. Man, and uh, I appreciate that, bro. It makes dude, me feel good. You're you're the guy for real. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate it, sure. man. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure that's when you start getting the Travis Kelsey uh all the look time like compliments <laughs> last football <laughs> season it went bananas i wish i had a graph of like there was a, like two or three months like the middle of football season when they were going viral all the time yeah but like 10 people a night would be like yo travis kelsey his style is a little different now so he changed it yeah, up, now he got right? the handlebars he got the handlebars right. the longer he- hair on top too right yeah yeah um i think i think the swifty Influence got to him for I sure, think that man. she told him to change his haircut yeah don't you know oh yeah 100 percent. hey dude. because before what? before he was dating her Mm-hmm. He was dating sisters, right? If I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, who? Kelsey. Mm-hmm. He was like what? Were like his girlfriends before that? They I, were, I can't they confirm were, that, but his personality seems like that could. be I want to say like two girlfriends before her. Both of them were black, I think. So I don't know if that like Siri would know. I just uh, uh, he got with Taylor Swift, killing. bro, and now he looks like motherfucking like farmer from like a target ad yes yeah, so well, so <laughs> yeah bro like I mean, but, play for the corn but hey bro you know if my if my lady got that much money i guess i'll switch up my style with whatever she wants me to switch up to. no way bro <laughs> dude, you all think of them, so dude. well because i saw she like a billionaire else. she's a billionaire already right i think so Facts. i'm pretty sure she's gotta be i mean if you had a billionaire girlfriend and she told you hey I think you should get this style instead. Yeah, maybe if she didn't yeah. even like make you do it, but just like heavily hinted That's or was like, saying, I like, like this. It's like, right. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> for a I'll, I'll do that. For, for a billion? Yeah. I, like, I don't think it's even like that. I think even if your fiance right now was like, hey, Justin, I really like this look and I love what you're doing. You know, you've done it for a long time. I like just for me. Would you mind just trying? But what this if you hate it, me? though? But what if you hated the look that she wanted you to go for? No, that, that's the thing. So I'd be willing to try it unless I hated it. Right. You know what I'm but saying? if she had a billion dollars, though, <laughs> I, might, 
<laughs> It'd be hard. But, but you're gonna like it. <laughs> It'd be really hard to find things I hate <laughs> at that price point, for sure. Yeah, that checks you're out. You're gonna bro. get yourself to like it. Yeah, I'll make out. it happen. I'll make it work. Start thinking. Start looking at the positives and shit. Man, yeah. no way. You know There's another that one that I'm always playing that that. like shit too. Oh, bro. <laughs> He's he like, is. He's like a total of ten points he all season. But, but so that kind of started last year though a little bit, right? Like he kind of yeah, started maybe the first two or three games. Yeah. Tight ends are weird like that because sometimes they're not involved in the game plan. Mark Andrews yeah. ain't doing shit. Laporta ain't doing shit. None of the tight ends are really doing shit. Y'all right? know who I picked this year? I had the I had uh, the first pick in our in our draft and one I picked CMC. one and I picked CMC. Of course, you my did. mom did. Sixty percent of drafts probably went that way. You know what I'm saying? My boy CMC. I couldn't wait to pick him. Oh. I'm, I'm a Niner fan, so like I'm. Oh, know. double effect. Yes, bro. But I picked up. I ended up picking up. Uh, Mason. Jordan Mason. And he's yeah. been hitting for me pretty good, except for last yeah, except last, for yesterday. yesterday. He didn't do too hot. Yeah, yesterday he didn't do shit. But yeah. two days previous, or last two, two weeks games, previous to that, he's, he's been balling. Hand bone. He's been balling. But yeah. So yeah, man. Uh, but how? Yeah. But what's Travis. up with y'all, man? Like, how? how is everything going for y'all? You know, I know the... It's crazy, man. Can we properly introduce I've been, Chris? I've been cutting... Oh, am I done with this introduction? You want to no, introduce... I think, you, I think you already introduced... Did you introduce... Kind of. I'm just thinking, <laughs> you're just the man, bro. I don't know. I just wish, that I, I, I want to get that across the page. I've never had ahead, a barber bro. that, first of all, no, like you were talking about the popular haircuts that are in style right now, but I don't really, I don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For me, I think, uh, and most people, you find a picture of somebody that you think like, you know, has a haircut that's not even just someone that looks good. Right. Cause, but like if Travis Kelsey right now, if you saw that haircut and you were like, oh, you know what? Like, I, I kind of want to do something like that, you know, just boom, take it, that picture, bring it to you. It's crazy. Cause the cut that kelsey has right now yeah even though like we're joking about it and shit that look is in right now it is you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so, yeah the mustache mm-hmm. is in right mm-hmm. now and, and i think i think he's rocking like some type of a form of a mullet almost like mm. really yeah like a like it. a subtle yeah. kind of short mullet like, not like a joe dirt mullet yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying but <laughs> we'll, we, we'll get a, a modern mullet is what we call them stylish modern yeah. mullet. we call them modern mullets in in my industry in the yeah. hair industry right. i'm actually i actually i'm rocking a modern mullet right now but mine's more like of a flow back you know yeah but People hear mullets and they think like automatically like Joe Dirt, 100%. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, those type of mullets. But, bro, that that's really not a lot of kids nowadays. Brought it back in. It's more modernized. Yeah, yeah. More refined. Refurbished it. Refurbished. <laughs> you know, you can rock that shit in the office and not look crazy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can go, you know, to fucking to a bar or whatever. You can headbang, bro. Yeah. You can fucking headbang. That's like a, a, a plus to all the long hairstyles. You could fucking headbang yeah, for, for real. For sure. For sure. If you don't have long hair, are you headbanging? You're just throwing your neck around. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. The other day I saw The hair's a fucking... I imagined I had hair the other day, and I was headbanging with the imagined hair in my head. Right. And I was like, wow, I never do this and with my normal haircut. It, I'm not making this up. Though. You access a different level, bro. It's like level 12. Because it's like your head's in rhythm, but your hair is on a different rhythm. Yeah. You can like, it's two different beats. It's yeah. your head and your hair. Right. Boom, boom, no, boom. Sure. Yeah, that's a whole different kind of... That's, head, that's headbanging, baby. That's headbanging. <laughs> No diddy. No diddy. Yeah, no there diddy. we are. And here we are. A thousand <laughs> no bottles diddles. of baby oil later. Oh, shit, bro. Yes. Now that's another, that's a, man, that's crazy. Dude. Yeah. What else we talk? Okay, so, yeah, I guess 11 years, no, 11 years in business, mm-hmm. nine years here. Yeah. That's fucking mm-hmm. tight, bro. And cutting hair. That's the shit, bro. Since I was like 16. Yeah, 16, 17. Super knowledgeable, bro. So I feel like every time I've come in, you definitely have been talking to me. My haircut right now, one day you were just like, yeah, man, this is like a really in style. I think that mm-hmm. it would also look good on you. Just like I'm looking on Instagram and this style is really popular and mm-hmm. I, it's going to hit on you. Like, let's just go for it. And I'm just like, no hesitation. I mean, a little hesitation, but yeah. I'm, I would normally I would say, no, nah, I'm not. Let's mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. get crazy here. But I trust you. You know what I'm saying? Really good. Made me look the best I've ever looked in my life. Um, it's crazy. A haircut will change your life, bro. Like, I, I just believe that. Like, yeah. that's something I'll stand on. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think with a haircut, it changes your your confidence. You know what I'm saying? You could go be more successful at your job. Um, you know, maybe have a little more confidence to ask someone out or to go for a promotion or something like that. Legitimately change your life just because a haircut makes you feel different. It's for crazy. Sure. For sure. Hey, Matt, you want to lock that door, bro, just in case a client or someone tries to come in here? I might be live for the podcast. No, I'm just like, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Yeah, because sometimes that shit will happen. Like the other day, like a couple of weeks ago, oh, yeah. we were shooting like a um, a little mini documentary type of thing here, and okay. a client walked in. And I'm like, bro, we're shooting right now. <laughs> Damn, we're live. People will be walking in, bro. Like, we close already. Don't you? Don't you see the? Don't you see the sign? <laughs> does it say open or does it close? Does it say closed? 
The Amish next she says open. But our hours, though. <laughs> our hours are closed already. Don't you see the hours? Like, have we been to Google? So it says open. <laughs> it says open. Right? All right, smart open. ass. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> for sure. A little bit. I was like, no, for sure. What the fuck? I'd, I'd be upset too. <laughs> no, you said you're shooting like a documentary or like a some sort of yeah, video series. For yeah, the we're doing. I'm trying to put it because I'm eventually want to put together my own YouTube page, you know. Of course. And uh, yeah, uh, we, I'm. Oh, just in the nick of time, I think. Wow. Oh, no, this guy works. <laughs> this guy works next door. He's a. Oh, okay, never guy. mind, never mind, never mind. He's he's a kind of an asshole though sometimes. Oh no, we're talking about you, bro. <laughs> Dude, live on the internet, being an asshole, it's coming back to get you. <laughs> I ain't gonna say. No What's names. the pass for the? I mean, no we're, names. we're live, but no I can't names. get no into names. the Wi-Fi, isn't it? Um, Ortiz. L- yeah, lowercase. Lowercase. Yeah, no, no caps underscore oh nine. Yep. Oh nine. I was doing oh seven. Sorry, guys. Damn. Oh, Damn. Bro, what? yeah. So okay, hold on, real quick, is that science Steve Young? That is. That's Wyland. Yeah, I got it from uh, a client had actually brought it to me. Mm-hmm. He said, "Hey, he bought it off of this woman at a garage sale, um, and I think her—I don't know—she had just got a divorce with her husband, or the owner, or he passed away. So one, <laughs> I don't—I can't remember the story. It's one of the two. <laughs> yeah, but he—but he ended up uh, buying it from her, and he—he he ended up giving it to me. So nice, that's pretty dope. bro. That's, yeah. yeah, that's tight as hell. Pretty cool, man. That's lit. But yeah, no. Um, so yeah, how's things been for y'all, man? Like." I know y'all are starting the, the podcast and y'all do y'all been doing music too before that, you know, like yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot going on. Yeah. But it's all going and I think it's just like, I don't know, it's crazy cuz yeah, we've been doing been doing the music for a long time. That's like 2017, 2018, maybe is mm-hmm. when that started up. Mm-hmm. And been doing it beforehand for sure, like just freestyling and stuff with the homies and kind of coming up with that and like kind of that was like our free time, you know, like part of our mm-hmm. hobbies that we would do when we would hang out. Mhm. Just be freestyling. Dude, that's why I needed my first haircut that I ever found you for was because we were going to do a show. Really? Yeah. And I was like, I think I th- maybe we we're just writing hip hop and the idea of us doing a show was in my mind. And I was like, yo, I got to like, you know, stunt a little bit. I, yeah. I remember when you were like first, like starting, you know, like, yeah, mm-hmm. you were, you were still in college then. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. I was 23. You're 23. Sure. Yeah. That was still Damn, in college bro. for me. Some that's people crazy. finish up and around you're that time. 30 now? Yeah. Damn. That's what I'm saying. Man, it's crazy. Man, dog. Time flies, boys. Time fucking flies. <laughs> you, you, I've told man. you about every release that we've done. Yeah. Um, just because Barber Talk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, always, what's what's up, man? We're releasing some music. No, for sure, man. Yeah, you're the reason we release clean versions of our music <laughs> so we can play it in the barber shop. You know <laughs> there what I'm saying? There you go. I'm always like, no, we need the clean one for Chris. No, I appreciate it, for man. real. Justin will be like, no, we need the clean one for Chris. I'm like, you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. No, that's dope, man. Oh, it's cool to see. It's cool to see y'all's, uh, you know, Yo, story, man. It's cool right, to see. Yeah, it's crazy because the it's, progress, you know, the right. the the different, you know, steps that y'all have been taking and been through, and you know, like yeah, just, I don't know you as much as I do, you know, my boy here, but you know, I, I feel like I know you a lot just because, yeah. you know, man, he always fills me in on what's going on, and you yeah, know. hundred thousand, bro. Yeah, same, same thing. You know, what I'm saying same same thing. No, for sure, man. And it's it's, it's cool to see y'all grow, man. You know. Yeah, it's really dope, that. bro. And Absolutely. you know, it's it's crazy to have y'all here doing the podcast. I know me and Matt been talking about it for a minute now, for I guess as long as y'all been doing the podcasting, you know. Yeah. So it's funny. I I mean, I thought I was eventually gonna go to y'all, but yeah. you say, hey, "Fuck it, we coming to you, Chris." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah the we coming to you, man, So bring it to you. That's dope, bro. Yeah, it's that's cool because how it man. started out, or it's like we started with the music, and that was its own adventure, its own that's series of things, of books, and then that yeah. kind of led to the idea of like, well, we need we need some sort of media or some sort of outlet for mm-hmm. content for an artist. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like we need something to post consistently. You can't just be like posting the same songs over and over and over right. again. Right, I'm sure that's a, a struggle that all artists are dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's dealing with that struggle yeah. on social media. I mean, you need something to put out. So, so then like the podcast idea came into play. I was like, oh, we could do our own podcast. And that'd be fucking, that'd be easy content to post all the time. Yep. And then that sort of just like took on its own identity and its own form. And now it's yeah. like a fucking beast. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> a little baby thought. Podcast. <laughs> Bods. <laughs> no, it's, it's badass, bro. Like, no, uh, yeah. like I was talking to Matt last night uh, and, um, I was just telling him how I'm trying to put, to, I want to eventually put together uh, my own podcast for the barbershop. For sure, bro. Um, because I see, I see barbers like uh, that, you know, that I, that I follow that, of course, you know, influence me. And uh, one of the main things that helps them is is the podcast, you know, and, and no one around this area is doing that. Like no one in, not even like in Austin, 
you know mm-hmm. um i don't even think in san antonio really like i don't see i haven't i haven't seen no barbers and i'm in the barber world like yeah yeah i'm sure you would know yeah you know man saying? like you know no one's doing podcasting you know so it's yeah. like to me man it's just another way to grow your brand 100 percent. you know uh have have you know the people connect with you you know through a different way you know what i'm saying absolutely and uh man i'm i'm excited to I'm excited to do this, but I'm also excited to, you know, dive deeper into it and, yeah. you know. Yeah, we connected early on, especially because we both had the need to make content, I think. So we would talk about, like, how do we, what kind of stuff would we post? How often do you post? Like, the importance of trying to be, like, a social media influencer mm-hmm. to, like, help the brand or help the craft so that we could, like, make more money. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure. And it's still a struggle, but... Yeah, I think that podcasting is definitely an answer that yeah, can you just help. turn it to the left, and then that should be able to move it up and down and perfect, in and out. Perfect. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. yeah, it's cool. So that that baby idea of mm-hmm. just podcasting is dope and could help with the branding and business. It, Justin, when he describes the story to me of like kind of the idea behind doing a full on podcast studio, it, it really is like this idea that got its own heartbeat and it just was like, dude, I think this is just a good idea. I'm gonna make a business plan. I'm looking at the business plan, and it's like. I don't, for me I, I learned in that moment some businesses some business plans just make sense like you read it and you're like oh yeah that's gonna work that's right. gonna make money you know what i'm saying right and it was relatively low risk in the sense where a lot of it was based on our our own performance so it's almost like a commission job but it's being an entrepreneur you know what i'm saying so as long as mm-hmm. we stay down and we grind and we make sure we meet our numbers and our quotas and stuff like that which are reasonable quotas for and we're not asking too much you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then like it's going to work out. It's going to keep working out. And so far it's been nothing but everything I could ask for. Like it feels like every green light keeps hitting. We keep, we keep seeing go and we keep going. Man. And I, and I know that's a great feeling, man. Yeah. It's you awesome. Know, I know that's a great feeling. Dude. Especially taking a risk to feel like it's yeah. validated with all of your experience. Like everything's just going so well. You're like, okay, yes. Yeah, so maybe I made a good choice. You got to take risks, man. You got to. I was going to say, yeah, you're in a similar boat. You like, whenever, risks, what, yeah, what made you decide? So like, whenever you started cutting hair, you were starting cutting hair. But then when did the point come to where it was like, okay, I want to open up my own shop or I want to do my own thing? Um, well, so like I said, I started cutting in my mom's uh, bathroom first. And uh, eventually, um, you know, I built up a pretty good clientele from, from the cats in school. Yeah, and yeah. and eventually it just started trickling to... People, you know, from Kyle, you know, San Marcos. Were you cutting like in people's houses or did you have a spot? You no, were they'd come out? to me. Okay, they, They'd come to me, bro. So eventually what happened was I started getting too many motherfuckers in the house, right? Yeah, right. I was going to say. So then my, my mom was like, hey. Why are there 30 you, people you here? Need to figure, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to figure something out because you're. it's like you have all these random people in the house, in the living room waiting, in the bathroom. And mind you, she had just got her her bathroom like remodeled. No. Yeah. So she had just like <laughs> finally like got it badass how she wanted it. She uh-huh. did she did like a custom shower and fucking repainted the whole thing. Did the floors, you know, fix it up, bro. Mm. And I and it and then that's when I started cutting hair. So I like took over it, you know? Yeah. And uh there you go. It looks yeah. pretty nice in here, mom. Yeah. <laughs> it looks pretty yeah, good. Exactly. You did great work. So eventually she was like, You need to you need to figure something out because yeah, this this is getting crazy. So what I ended up doing um, was uh, I started s- saving uh, saving some money, you know, that I would make from cutting hair, mm-hmm. and I ended up investing in a like one of those little sheds, little shed uh, storage type like of outdoor things. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I converted that into like a little mini barbershop, oh. you know. And um, yeah, I had uh, at that time I had clients that uh, some some guys did uh, installed mirrors, so I had them come install the mirrors for me. Uh, had a client that did electricity, so he came and did like all electric work. Um, that's tight. Man, that's yeah, crazy. bro. Like I had like my little connects that I kind of made already, and that's business, um, baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. You know, it was uh, it worked out for me. You know, and then uh, me and my me and my girlfriend, um, who my, you know at the time was my girlfriend, now is my my wife or whatever, and uh, she um, we ended up finding out that she was pregnant. So. That like kicked me in the ass and was like, all right, I really need to take this shit serious, you know? And um, that's when I enrolled into barber school. And um, yeah, man, started going to barber school. And that, okay, like nice. I said, barbering, cutting hair, that was the only thing that I, I was passionate about, you know? Like I worked, I worked other jobs besides you know, the NBA. Besides the NBA. Come exactly. on, baby. Besides the NBA. <laughs> uh, I had a, I had worked other jobs, you know, fast food joints, retail spots. Mm-hmm. And uh, I knew I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't. I didn't want to do that. Just you know a job. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the 
the whole basketball thing that honestly took a stopped you know that that like came to a sudden halt. i actually had gotten to a car wreck uh, i think it was my junior year in high school and i fucked up some vertebrae in my lower back and that That when that happened that's when i was like all right I'm gonna have to figure something. But yeah, at the time, yeah, yeah. I was already uh, interested in cutting hair, you know, because okay. that's when I was already going to the barbershop. Mm-hmm. and that was always like my plan B. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I knew that was the other thing that I loved doing, you know, or at least like I enjoy this pa- exactly. Yeah. So that's what I did. You know, I fell back on that, and uh, you know, the rest is history, bro. So yeah, man, uh, things really uh, took a turn, and I guess got serious for me when I found out that I was gonna be having a a kid on the way. You know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, I just followed that passion and took it more serious and started school. And that's that's how I really, you know, took it to that next that next level. Yeah, man. bro, that's tight. Cause, yeah, it's, it's a it's a risk that like entrepreneurs all like share to a degree. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, I, I got to fucking make this thing that's like in my head. I got to make yeah. it. And it's, you know, it's pay crazy. money. People got to pay money for this thing that's in my head. What's well, crazy, bro. Like in the very beginning when I when I was uh, getting more serious about cutting hair, I was still like uh, I was cutting hair, but I was still working. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had it at at uh, one point I was working at a KFC. I was working at KFC, and uh, it was funny, bro. This fucking manager, she was she was she was kind of a bitch, you know what I'm saying? It happens. And, uh, um, it was it was one busy. I think it was a Saturday night, Friday night. I can't remember. And um, she was like, "Chris, I need you to drop." Uh, she gave me a number of wings to drop, mm-hmm. so I dropped them and. Uh, she came back and she was like, "Did you drop? Uh, did you drop the the wings I told you?" I was like, "Yeah." And then she tried to say that she told me to drop like another batch, and I was like, "You only told me this batch, you know?" Because mm-hmm. I think she had got bitched at by like a higher manager than her, so she tried to use me as a scapegoat, you know. Uh, and I was like, "That's a, this is a funny story, bro." Because I remember like taking off my apron and throwing it like in the chicken batter, and I was like, <laughs> "I was like, man, I'm out this bitch," and I like walked out, you know what I'm saying? And I, when I left, I remember I was like, "Man, I was fucking stupid." And I remember getting home, and I told uh, I told my mom what I had did because I was cutting hair already, right? Oh no! Yeah. And uh, she was like, "You got a fucking baby on the way, and you did that dumbass shit." And I'm like, well, "I'm about to start cutting hair," and uh, you know, it was crazy because uh, it worked out, man. You know, and I'm yeah. glad it worked out because. <laughs> but it's just one of the moments, bro. It's like. Sometimes, you know, you, you got to fucking just jump in, bro. You know, sometimes yeah, like yeah. you sometimes people like, you know, they got one foot in, one foot out type shit, you know, especially All in the barbering time. world. You know, like they'll they'll we'll get people who come into the into the industry and they're like, you know, yeah, they're doing barbering, bro, but they're still working part time at this job or you know, whatever it may be and it's like Bro, you just need to, like, if, if you're going to pursue whatever you're going to pursue, you just need to fucking jump in it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's the best way to get in it, dude. For because real. When you do that and you and you cut that bridge off and you have no no point of going back that that's that's when you really fucking find out, bro. Yeah. What kind of person you are. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And when I did that, I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> when, when I when I did that, bro, no, for real. When I yeah. did that, man, it was like, all right, bro, this is it, Chris. You you got to make it happen, you know? And uh and yeah, man, fucking 15, 16 years later, you know, I'm still still making it happen, that's bro. That's fucking tight, bro. You that's know? it. But, but that's really that that's really when it when it really like got real for me, bro. And I was like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Because mm-hmm. at that point, I couldn't turn back because I had just threw my fucking apron <laughs> in the chicken batter. And I, I just fried I my apron. Shit, I told you know, Kathy, so. fuck herself. <laughs> I can't go back there. I can't go back, bro. You know, so. Uh, so, yeah, man, it was, oh, it was pretty man. it was pretty dope, bro. But it's a funny story I like to tell because it. Yeah, was did you did you cuss shit. anybody out or would you? Just nah, like, I was just like, oh, man, I'm out this bitch and I fucking <laughs> and, I, and I exact I said them exact words, bro, and I threw my shit in the chicken batter. I'm out this and bitch. Out. Yeah, and, 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 I, and, I, and I remember like, you know, the, the, my, my homies I worked with, they looked at me like I was crazy, you know, I was like. <laughs> Man, whatever. I, I think I might have took a cookie on the way out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah with interest, bitch. <laughs> but no, That's man, so funny. It was dope, bro. It was funny. Yeah. I, I feel like you got to have one good <laughs> Quit quitting story. story. Yeah, that's fire. Yeah. You got to quit that's somewhere gas. aggressively. Yeah. yeah. But that, that was the last place that I worked at, you know, other than, you know, cutting hair and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I never went out with a bang anywhere. Yeah. No, you don't. That, yeah, okay. you... You don't have to. I just was being <laughs> dramatic with it. But. That's a great story. That's a great story. Dealing with chicken all fucking day, bro. It can, it can, you know. I can't imagine that <laughs> here, bro. That job sounds terrible. Yeah, it, it sucked, bro. <laughs> We're gonna KFC. Yep, but 
service yeah, industry, baby, service industry. Making service people happy. Industry. There's always something good about that. I think all industries are service industry, you know, nowadays. I think, we we talked, to, talked about this before, like hospitality. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so especially like in the barbershop for sure. It's like, I mean, y'all worked in the, the restaurant business. Big right? time, big time. Yeah, for like mm-hmm. y'all still years. Y'all still are, right? No, or, no. In a sense. Out. Yeah, I guess, yeah, we're, we're doing like a, some of the media production for a restaurant. Okay, okay. But not actually like fucking. Not working. deep in the game. Yeah, nah, not, not taking, yeah. Out of there. Y'all did that for we how We jumped in, baby. We jumped in that bitch, bro. <laughs> hey, man, that's what you got to do, bro. For real. That's what you got to do, especially when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. part of the game, Yeah, how long? Because I remember telling myself, like, here's my story. When I talk about college, I'm like, well, I, I went to, for finance, and then I didn't, wasn't doing great in finance, a.k.a. I was failing all my classes. <laughs> and then, you know, since I wasn't doing so great at finance, I was doing great at accounting, a.k.a. I got a B instead of all the Fs. That was, like, <laughs> one class I did kind of good in. So I, I switched to an accounting major, and I really liked accounting. Um, I never took like second layer layer courses. I took like the first one and I think I failed the second accounting class and it was, I was good at it, but then I ended up saying, uh, but I wanted to be an entrepreneur anyways. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't really go to business school to be an entrepreneur. So, I mean, I could go back and finish accounting, but I'm just like, let me just start my own business. But like, I I said that for like the last three or four years, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I never was like starting my own business. And then I feel like I'm so thankful that we did this when I turned 30 because it's such a nice like benchmark. I'm like, yeah, there was time I spent in my 20s. Like I could have started doing something like this when I was 21. You know what I'm saying? There's people that like, how old were you when you were Wait. quit KFC? When I quit KFC, I want to say I was 20, right? 19 or 20. So you've been, you were full cutting, full time cutting hair your entire 20s. Yeah. That's yep. cr- not a lot of people are entrepreneurs for that, for that yep. decade in their life, you yeah. know? That's going ham. But I, I couldn't let another decade go by. That's the thing. Had to get in there, bro. Yeah. Like, you just got to get in there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. And you know what? Um, I think definitely a pro, you know, starting when you're 30 is, like, when I started in my 20s, bro, I, I like, I was still developing mentally, mm-hmm. you know, like, I mean, I, I know I wasn't as mature as I, I should have been or I would like to, or I would like to be, you know, or like to have been back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, once I, once I hit my 30s, dude, I just feel like mentally... I just started thinking, you know, differently, you know, started thinking more, you know, uh, calculated, you know what I'm saying, yeah, man? Yeah. Like, so I think starting in your, in y'all's thirties is, is definitely, uh, you know, a plus because mentally, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all are no, y'all are no, y'all can see clearer what y'all, what y'all are doing, mm-hmm. you know, y'all are more yeah. mature mentally. I mean, cause men don't, men don't mature <laughs> until, you know, I know what you mean. I'm like like fully, five. fully mature yeah. mentally yeah. until. I mean, shit. I feel like we fuck even goddamn. Depends on the man. Yeah, bro. You know, like I feel like women women mature way more quicker, bro. Mentally, you know. But now that's that's dope that y'all starting it now. You know what I'm saying? So y'all 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 don't fucking hit as many bumps in the road and have as many hiccups as you would in your twenties. Hundred percent true. Because I man, I made a lot of mistakes in my twenties, man. You know, especially trying to be a business owner and I'm sure you know entrepreneur and yeah, a parent at that too. You know, Mm -hmm. it is. It was tough, bro. You know, can't so imagine. I'm ha- I'm blessed to to be in the position I'm, to made it. I'm, made it through. I'm blessed to make it through, bro. You yeah. know, so sometimes God just finds a way, bro. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? no, for sure, man. Yeah, I'm happy the way it played out, honestly, because I feel really well equipped, like working in the service industry for one, but then also having worked in like a very high end hospitality and just being around like when you're trying to provide a luxury service to someone like the mindset and the verbiage and like what that looks like when, cause it's hard to imagine, you know, billing someone for 10 or $20,000. It's like, what makes that worth that? How, how could I make it worth that? It's a weird mm-hmm. thing to understand. But when you see the people, I mean, like even just I can imagine selling Ferraris or like Lamborghinis, just that upper end service, the kind of things they offer and what that experience is like for someone. We were around it enough for me to understand not fully like I don't know everything, but I have a relationship with it. I can I understand what people expect when they come into a nice place. And I feel like I don't have any problem charging like a price point because I know like what it's like to offer a service and what it's like for someone to appreciate that service and purchase it, you know? Right. Right. But just to when I was just like, Oh man, what am I gonna do for my entrepreneurship in college and shit like that? I didn't know no experience, you know what I'm saying? It would have felt weird. I'm sure you just jump in and you figure it out, right? But I feel really prepared because of how we spent good, that time, you know? That's good. I feel, like Justin said, it all goes somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I think everything's kind of working for you and there's like a God or whatever it is you, is going to mm-hmm. come through and have like a perfect plan for you in that moment where it's like, okay, everything's good. Like it worked out. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes, you know, you jumping in is, is actually you giving, giving, giving him the wheel, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Yeah. For real. And, um, whatever that's supposed to happen for you, you, you let it happen, you know, you let it, you know, you let it naturally start to go in that direction. I feel like a lot of times people, they try to, uh, you know, they try to go against it, you know? And sometimes, man, like I tell people, man, you just like, like my barbers that come in, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you know, trust it, trust the process, you know? And, uh, I think that's a big thing, man. You know, I think that's a really big thing. Yeah. Especially sure. like it's, I guess it's, it's hard to have someone trust the process if it's like, uh, especially if it's something that they're not passionate about, you know what I'm saying? That's why you need to be passionate. Yeah. You need to have some sort of enjoyment that you get out of the pursuit yeah. of the actual doing of the thing. It's like you need to have some sort of joy and like positive emotion to that because it's a, uh, the process is bitch sometimes. The it's, passion it's and the passion, man, that, that's, that's the fuel. That's the fuel that drives you. That's yeah. the fuel that, that gives you, you know, that, that you know what you need, you know, to keep going, man. If you mm-hmm. have no passion, it's like a car, you know. You got no motherfucking gasoline in that tank. That shit, that, that ain't going nowhere unless it's electric. <laughs> but if you, but if you won't charge it, if you don't got a charging dock, that that bitch ain't going to work neither. You yeah, know, dude. so all the drive in the world, you still need pa- gas. Passion is the fuel, bro. That drives, that drives you. And without that shit, bro, it's mm-hmm. it ain't going to work out. Yeah, where know? do you think that comes from? You know what I'm saying? It's like, or like, because you were, I guess maybe it's like your surroundings a little bit, or like maybe it's somewhat then genetic. Or the cause... passion. Yeah, because I guess sometimes, I guess like your passion specific, specifically, you were my, like drawn to like my, this like serviceability or like this so like, art. When the moment I knew, bro, that I really, really, uh, I guess knew I wanted to to be to do uh, barbering mm-hmm. was um, I was in the eighth grade, and uh, it was the first time I went to my barber, Irvin, the one in Lockhart. Uh, before that, man, I, you know, I'd get haircuts and stuff, but it was never, it was never, a, I never felt like super confident after these cuts, you know, it was, it was basic ass haircuts, you know, so yeah, like, great clips. I didn't fucking know like what a dope cut actually was, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, the first time uh, I remember I went to his shop, I had actually uh, found him through a cousin of mine who had went to to him and my cousin at the time. He went to school in Lockhart, and I went to school here in Kyle. Hmm. And he was one of those distant cousins. You know, I didn't really see him all the time. Um, but one time, uh, we had some type of family event going on, and I saw him, and I saw his fade. And I was like, damn, that's a dope-ass cut. You know, I just remember, like, super crispy lineup, like, fresh-ass blend, you know. And I was mm-hmm. like, man, it, it was different, you know. Yeah. And I remember I asked him, and he told me about this barber in Lockhart. Well, I had went to him and um, sat down in his chair and he, you know, he, he tightened me up, bro, gave me the cut. And I remember looking at it when he was done and I was like, damn, this motherfucker is fresh, bro. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I just remember the feeling that it gave me, the yeah. confidence that it, the instant confidence that it gave me, bro. Yeah. And, uh, at that point, man, that's when I was like, damn, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe this might be something that I might be interested in, you know? That's valuable. Or right? you were like, oh, this and, is... And yeah, that was the moment when I, when I knew I was like, man, I could see myself doing this because I wanted to make people feel the way I felt. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. And uh, I mean, bro, you can't put a value on giving someone else some confidence. How you feel, yeah. You know, because I mean, fuck, bro, like, who knows what the fuck you're going to do with that confidence? You know, <laughs> who knows? Like, I know. I'm going to turn up. You know, like, I'm like, going to turn up with it. You know, whether, you know, mountain. whether that's a homie, you know, young college kid going out, you know, trying to pick up some girls or whether it's, whether it's, it's a guy trying to, you know, impress their, job their interview. boss, bro. Job interview, yeah. Job interview. Meet the in-laws. Yeah. Your we, wedding, bro. Wedding, bro. You like, go to your fucking wedding faded to death. Oh, like, God. Are you not going to go to your wedding faded to death? Have bro. To. <laughs> so remember I told you I went to a wedding this weekend? It was, it was actually one of my buddy's uh, weddings that I went, I went to. And man, he had the most ugliest haircut, no. bro. And I'm like, and I, I remember after the ceremony and shit, and I went up to him. I'm like, bro, what did you do? Like, no, y'all are that did, close. How did you get that haircut, bro? Like, <laughs> you fucking look like a cone head. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, because my boy, man, he, so, you know, he got to, his his head's a little pointy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm like, bro, like, you literally fucking look like a fucking thumb. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, bro, like I, was a, big toe, I was dog. upset, bro. I was like, no, why would you do that shit, bro? Like, professionally, but, I'm offended. No, but it's yeah, but you know, I'm saying, bro, like, it's a uh, congratulations, bro. But God dang it, like, <laughs> like the uh, yeah, haircut's a big thing, bro. You know, big thing, bro, big <laughs> crazy thing. thing. It's super, important. especially in today's society right now, bro. Like more the, so now yeah, than yeah, ever. No, it's 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 crazy, bro. Yeah, presentation but. is killer. I mean. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude, there was a while where I was <laughs> just crushing at my job because my presentation of myself was so nice. It was really just like steaming my suit and then having a nice haircut. And then you got the beard thing going on, you know, like that's another like that's another aspect of it, bro. Like now the beards like are fucking mm-hmm. in, bro. And like mm-hmm. there's different variations of the beards now. Like there's like the, the grizzly beards. You know what I'm saying, bro? There's the fucking there's like the thin line up. Thin lineups. <laughs> you got the, the fades in the beard. Like fade I mean from the top, fade from the side. You know, like if a guy has a weak chin, you know what I'm saying? You can enhance that shit with leaving <laughs> the middle part full and like I mean I'm just saying bro like it's is endless, you know what I'm saying? Like, which yeah. even even motherfuckers that are bald, <laughs> like if you bald headed but you got like a nice beard, set, bro. Andrew bro, Tate, bro, that shit can That's work a look. for you still. That's a look. You, know what you, you hitting with that? Now you're they got the hitting. skullets. You know, have y'all heard of the skullets? No, you know no, what that I is. Want to say I have. from here down. That's like where, like, if a motherfucker is going bald, okay. you know, up top. Now barbers are like starting to like f- just cut the top, but like <laughs> leave the back, but like fade it. I mean, and like if you do it right. Okay. Bro, some of those motherfuckers look clean, bro. With bro. the beard, but you gotta have the beard though. With the if you don't got a beard, you can't do the skullet. Uh, so we got backup options. It's one. Backup it's options. one piece. The beard included in the skullet. Kind of. <laughs> kind like of. Like a shiesty almost. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. But but I mean, if if it's done right, yeah, it's it's pretty clean, dog. It's Hell pretty yeah, clean, bro. So people making it fucking happen, bro. For sure. For sure. Have you ever done? Do you, okay, so I'm sure you do men's hair, of course. But have you done like fe- fe- female female hairs? I guess you also not, do like kids as um, well. Um, we do. I, I do kids, but no, not really like female styles. Mm-hmm. No, not really. More, more just uh, you know, the shorter, shorter. Um, I've seen you do one female client. It's a different. It's well, a different like piece. I have female clients, but they don't. They, but not like female styles. Yeah, though. Not like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Not like longer hair style. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like. Uh, you know, or like whatever. cosmetology, you is. know, or you, your be- a beautician. It style. is different. Like my sister, right, it's a different in animal. You, it's different for yeah, sure, bro. Right. For sure. Um, but yeah, no, like, um, uh, like right now in to, in in our um in the barber world, the cosmetology and barber world is kind of starting to like integrate a little bit now, and like um the mid link styles are starting to be more more in style. Mm. Um. Like the modern mullets, or like even just like the nice like flow back type of type of cuts, you know, with the nice, you know, a little crispy taper on the side. And yeah. I did have to, go, I did go uh, and uh, I went to, I traveled to Portland, Oregon, last year and worked with some guys um, who are based out of the UK, and um, <clears throat> I went and uh, did a, a workshop with them, like a four day workshop to learn to learn more of those techniques because of um just of how much they're playing a big pivotal role in in today's uh style yeah. and especially in the barber world you know like i'd get people who would come in the barber shop who were looking for those kind of looks and i didn't know how to do them you know so i'd be like petrified you know like i see a motherfucker walk in the the, the shop with like longer hair and like bro like it would be like dun 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 <laughs> and i'm like Whoa. You know, and sure yeah. enough, it'd be it'd be like, oh, I'm with Chris. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, bro. Like, fuck. you know, and like in deep down, I'm scared as fuck. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But of course, I'll got be like, yeah, yeah, I got you, bro. Okay. <laughs> but I, I hate I hated doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I went and learned, and you know, and uh, I do online courses now too, man. Like I'm like I'm constantly trying to trying to learn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. Try, that's trying, it bro. trying to better myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I mean. And once you stop learning, especially in the, in the barber industry, once you stop learning, you kind of put a cap on yourself, man. You know, and uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, shit's I'm, always I'm, changing. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be dead in the water. You know what I'm saying, bro? I want I want to keep growing, keep thriving, and especially now that I got this team of you know barbers behind me, I want to be able to help coach them and help develop them. You know, and yeah. I mean. I think it's just important, very important. For sure, because you're, you're in a place right now where you're kind of on top of the meta. Like, you know what's going on. You can do the biggest cuts that are in style. I think your fades are better than anybody I see on a normal basis, you know? So, like, that. you're really tapped into being excellent at your craft. 
And from this place, I don't think it's that difficult as long as you stay updated to continue to dominate in your field. Right. Whereas if you were to fall out of like the know, then you want to all of a sudden turn up and be good at what you do or maybe try to like win some awards around here mm-hmm. or, you mm-hmm. know, take clientele from people. It'd be really tough if you just like have to catch up a bunch, you know what I'm yeah, saying? For sure. But if you can stay on top and then just like to progress while you're in that place, I feel like that that's the key. That's the move, right? Yeah, man. I mean, when I got out of barber school, I honestly thought that I would never use like shears or scissors like i always thought i was just going to be doing like you know the typical you know short on top tight fade on the side taper fade you know and uh, like i said man that shit uh changed (laughs) dramatically you Mm -hmm. know and that's when i had to you know go and get out outsourced knowledge you know and extra information yeah man you know so yeah, I think it's important in every industry, you know what I'm saying? I think it's definitely it's always changing. Definitely, every something, or whatever the meta is, whatever's definitely. like the landscape, it's always shifting, changing. New things are coming in and old things are bring, being brought back with a different spin on it. And that's why I love, man, being able to talk to other entrepreneurs and business owners because, yeah, I may fucking, I'm doing hair. This guy may be, you know, fucking brewing beer. Y'all are doing y'all's podcasting, but we all can relate on just how business is, you know, and yeah, I mean, it's the same shit, you know, like same shit. We're, we're all trying to learn. We're all trying to get better and we can't get, we can't get too comfortable. You know, that's, that's my big thing, bro. Like I don't ever want to get too comfortable. Cause yeah. I think once you get too comfortable, that's when, you know, man, like you, you don't, you don't grow, you don't evolve, yeah, you know, the, 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 there's always a guy next to you, bro. Trying to, trying to, you know, outdo you or, you know, I mean, Someone's always trying to knock you off, you know? Yeah. So. Evolution is happening whether or not you're a part of it. Yeah. The game's going to change. The game is going to change, The needs bro. will change. And you got to keep up with it, you yeah. know? You got to keep up with the yeah. game. Yeah. So. It doesn't seem like it. Or it's like it's... It doesn't seem like it in the day-to-day. Sometimes it does. It's like if a big revolutionary thing kind of happens overnight, you're like, oh, shit, things are different now. But for the most part, it's the same day-to-day mm-hmm. with until you scope out six, seven, ten years later, and you're like, oh, shit things are a lot different now. Like, thank goodness I've been like keeping up with how things are slowly changing over time. Mm. Instead of like, if you, if you don't look up after five years, of like doing the same thing. You'll be like, oh shit, where's everybody else at? You'll be in a sure. different, different landscape. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? Sure. Definitely. Diff. But chat GBT and YouTube for the most part, I mean, dude, you learn anything in the world. You can learn a lot Stay of shit online. For sure. Yeah, no, for sure, man. There's a lot more resources now out here that, it's insane, dude. That, you know, like, uh, even like in the barber world, man, like, there's some of these young guys that are super, super advanced and way more advanced than what I was when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old. But it's because, like you said, man, it's just so many, so much resources out there, man. So mm-hmm. much different avenues that these guys can learn. And, you know, I mean, it's endless almost damn near now. So, yeah, it's super dope. Everything's bro. just a couple, couple searches away yeah. on a couple of different websites. And it's like, boom, yep. you have that information now. Yeah, for it's sure. Awesome. Yeah, hey, how, how long? So y'all went to college together, right? Yeah. What mm-hmm. did you, What did you go for, Justin? Uh, I went for my degree was in uh, concrete industry management, and then a minor in business. Okay. So it was a couple business things like business management and like some like basic accounting and mm-hmm. f- finance and stuff. But then yeah, the bulk majority was for kind of like construction materials, like construction science materials was another major that was like kind of almost hand in hand with ours. We had like a lot of the same classes. But ours was more specifically about like the concrete material itself mm-hmm. in the construction industry. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, those guys were more studying to be like general contractors. Yeah. But and then our study was more to be like a concrete, either like ready mix producers or like a, some sort of aggregate people mm-hmm. manufacturers or cement manufacturers. Okay. So yeah, concrete, cement, or rocks, Damn. more or less. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I didn't know they had a whole. I didn't know they. Me neither. You go to college. For that shit. <laughs> go figure. I think yeah. Texas <laughs> State. There's only two colleges. I think uh-huh. Texas State and then like Middle Tennessee. Why did you Why did you choose like that, that for? Strictly, strictly because I was sitting in on the like <laughs> lectures or like new student orientation. Uh-huh. You kind of after new student orientation, you kind of get broken into groups, and then those, those groups come back in together to be the one big group again, and then y'all split up again. Ba- this time based on your uh, the degree that you like claimed or signed mm-hmm. up for, mm-hmm. and at that point I was undecided as well as my roommate at the time, one of my best homies from high school. He was also undecided. So then we both just ended up going to the College of Science and Engineering. And then he went to like the chemistry. He ended up being a chemistry major and I was a chemistry teacher. 
principal, I think, actually, or so, I don't even know. He's he's in the in the school game now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he went that route, and then I went into the engineering more so side, not the scientific side, and then found this sort of construction peoples, and then listened to a couple of the. I guess they were kind of like pitching us their their brand, or like you know, what I'm saying like their their major, mm-hmm. and then through his his pitch of the major of the concrete industry program, he was saying that. I forget exactly. He was, yes, kind of a limited program. Only a couple people have it in the in the in the country. And the the big takeaway was that eighty percent of the graduates get jobs out of college. And I was like, okay, that's like why I'm here, more or less, or like what I'm trying to do. So yeah. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign in for that. And that was it. Do you do you feel like you were you were passionate? Oh, absolutely about not. That. No, no. <laughs> absolutely okay. not. About rocks? No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. And the, whole, yeah, the whole reason I even went to college was just because it's like the where the fucking school, other school of fish were going. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was yeah. just it's like, this is what we do. Like, this is what the so, 17 and 18 year olds do. You go to college. So if you could, you know would, would you, like, would you not go to college if you could like take it back? Or are you glad you went though? Like. It, it, I had to have gone. You okay. know what I'm saying? I had to go to get where we're at. You know what I'm saying? It's, okay. like, it's all perfect. It's like okay. I had to go to that that college. I had to pick that degree to get that. I had I, my one of my professors during my senior year got me an internship into where we started working in San Antonio, mm-hmm. and then we got working that job for a while. Then we ended up leaving that job, and then just found jobs on the river, like the Riverwalk, and like yeah. everything because kind of the whole story blew, like blossomed out of every right. decision. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, it's dope, all man. perfect looking back. So I, it worked now out. I would. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, but like if I if I were to do it again, like like my my child, like whenever yeah. she's in that 18, 17 year old range, it's like like you don't have to go to college. That, that's that's what I'm preaching. Okay. You definitely don't have to go to college to get what you want to get done. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you like, got to lock into that thing. Mm-hmm. And maybe unless you want to learn about something specific, yeah, you, know, yeah, you right. know what you want to sure, do. For you know sure, what I'm saying? For sure. yeah, of course, go learn about that shit. But so, like, so you, when you graduated high school, you didn't really know what you wanted to do. Oh, yet. No idea at all. Okay, zero. Okay, zero. hope dreams. We all had zero hope dreams. <laughs> zero I'm dreams. Trying to walk yeah. on dreams. somewhere. For sure. Yeah, no, no clue at all, bro. I just, I just knew that. Eventually, I knew that I was going to work for myself and I was going to be successful. Like no matter what I was doing, right? I was going to work for myself eventually in some right. facet, be my own boss somehow. Right. right. And then, yeah, now God has just sort of like slowly been showing me what it's supposed to be. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I was just been so like, like not lost, but just not found for sure. Right, you know oh, dude, <laughs> from the heat, dude. <laughs> so just, just, looking, what's to be. just trying to find what's what's yeah. going on, and then it was like, yeah. oh shit, oh shit, I'm gonna go this way. And that's yeah, like the yeah. music, and then like then the music led to another like, okay, now what? Are like we doing? like your GPS, oh, the podcast, your, your GPS was working, but. You were still trying to figure out where the fuck exactly you needed to turn type shit. Yeah, it was yeah. like rerouting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. rerouting. <laughs> no, a faster sure, route's right. been available. Yeah. Like, oh, to my dreams? <laughs> no, yeah. that's cool. And and you, Matt, like, when you got out of high school, bro, did... Dude, I wanted how to... How did be, you feel? I wanted to maybe be like a... a pro- I wanted to be professional. You know what I'm saying? I, I got mm-hmm. good grades. Mm-hmm. I graduated high in my class. And so, like, being... Having a college degree to do like a professional job definitely seemed like something that could happen for me you know what i'm saying so like part of me you know i thought about like wanting to be a lawyer but that's like a lot of extra school Mm -hmm. you know remember when you saying that like a long time ago yeah in our friendship that always appealed to me as like a dream job you know a doctor appealed like that i thought about that in the same category of professional jobs but i didn't really think that would be for me you know Mm -hmm. because i didn't like to study very much Mm -hmm. i did like to talk and i like to talk about like justice or like fairness mm-hmm. or truth <laughs> like these <laughs> this is some bullshit your yes. honor yeah. <laughs> okay well here okay check me out so when i when my parents split up Maybe my dad remarried and um i had two stepsisters right okay and my sister was living with my mom at the time so it was me and my dad and my stepmom and my two stepsisters right mm-hmm. in this blended family and i'm in middle school and they're just getting into high school and um you know i really had to fucking advocate for myself in a lot of conversations because one, both of our parents were kind of strict at that time, my dad and their stepmom. So, like, the judgment would get handed down, like, okay, well, today they're doing this, or, you know, you have to sit in the back seat, or whatever the fuck it might have been. Yeah. But it felt like if I didn't sit up and be like, hey, I've been in the back seat for like a month. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. What the hell is it going to take? Okay, what do we say? 30 more days. How about after 30 more days, then I'm then I'm good to sit up there at least once a week. How about that? Yeah. Like, I really had to start <laughs> bargaining, saying some fair shit. Some, some verbal you know arguments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
And then at that point in time, they kind of the girls kind of like locked in. They were like, OK, well, you will fucking. And they were older. They yeah. Were, oh, OK. OK. And so there would be times where I knew what was happening was unfair. Like as a kid, I'm just like, this is bullshit. Like, I know it's bullshit. <laughs> I'm not just feel. I'm not, I'm not biased. It's just objective bullshit happening. <laughs> and if I could like stop for a second and thoroughly explain it and kind of predict some of their counter arguments and already kind of just be like covering the whole situation and then afterwards be like. Oh, uh, yeah. Like it would stop the world. Like my dad would I'm be like, "I'm gonna say this, and then they're gonna say this in, re- in response." So, so I can say this, and then I, okay, okay. So no, the point two, okay, they're gonna say this, yeah. <laughs> and I would kind of go off, and then sometimes it would be just like they'd be like, "All right, you know what? Actually, Matthew gets the front seat this time." And then my dad would be like proud of me too. You know what I'm saying? For like mm-hmm. working my way through the bullshit and like identifying what was happening. And I'd be like, and they know, they know this too. You know what I'm saying? They're laughing in the back right now because they see me calling them out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I think that's why my dad was like, you, you could be a lawyer one day. Like legitimately, that's it right there. Like If you can just articulate why mi- misjustice is not happening or fairness isn't happening, then like you, you could really do that. So I kind of thought about doing that. And then the other thing that really appealed to me was entrepreneurship, like being your own boss Mm -hmm. or the idea, I guess, of selling something and then making the money. But like you're in charge of the whole enterprise. Like you're not a boss in that necessarily. You're not the worker necessarily. It's like you're designing the concept that's making money. Right. That idea really appealed to me once I found out that was like a possibility, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you can make money, this is a thought I had as a kid is if you can make your own money through a business, that's like the American dream. To, to go and turn a profit and you're in the green and it's your own fucking thing and you're the guy behind it, you got the investment or whatever it is. Like to me, in my own mind, I thought like if I never can do that, I don't know if I'll think that I'm like, you know, a badass or whatever. Like to earn my own self-respect, I think I have to do that someday. Mm-hmm. And that always kind of sat in the back of my mind. And then I knew, that's what I'm saying. Like I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's kind of the thing I'm talking about is I always wanted to go and try to turn my own profit. So I could say like, I'm a successful businessman one day, you know? Right. So that kind of bled out. Well, not like you said, all this shit just kind of happens. Like I kind of failed out of school. Then Justin got me a job working in concrete. And dude, that job really taught me that I did not want to fucking- You worked concrete? <laughs> it wasn't quite concrete, but- my job specifically was quality control. Okay. So I would go out to these cement plants that had piles of aggregate rock uh-huh. everywhere all over their site. And I'd go in a company truck and then I'd pull up to the site and I'd pull my shovel and pail out and I'd dig out rocks and bring them all back, like 20 samples of rocks, mm-hmm, drive mm-hmm. to all these different cities. You know, I was out in the sun, but I wasn't sitting doing like the hard labor. Yeah. I would see the dudes that were working on the plant outside yeah. in the fucking lifts and shit. Mm-hmm. And they all were like, here's this little bitch in his AC <laughs> truck. You know? AC cab, Bro. motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, I remember I tried to work uh, construction for like one week. And uh, yeah, I was like, no, I ain't. Yeah, the same for me. What were you doing? <laughs> uh, I was like just a helper. So I was literally just like. They fucking needed a, a fucking shovel, or if they needed the, the shit clean, mm-hmm. I, that's what I would do, you know. Because I had to start from the bottom, you know. Of course. But the bottom is where I stayed in that shit, bro. Because I was like, <laughs> after that first week, I'm like, nah, this ain't for me, man. I retire. This is not for <laughs> me. Where did um, <laughs> where did you start? How much money were, were you making? Is my question. Fuck, I don't even remember. Really? So I was there ago. for a fucking week, bro. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Like literally a week, dog. Like my it was my stepdad's company, bro, and uh, I, and uh, he he had a job site in San Antonio. And uh, it was like downtown San Antonio too, and yeah, and then I don't speak Spanish at all. I'm mm. like a fucking coconut, bro. I'm brown on the outside, <laughs> but I'm white on the I'm white on the inside, you know. And uh, I know you know a little yeah, bit, a little bit, a little bit. But you know, I was working with cats from straight from Mexico. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So like these cats was oh, like, English. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And like uh, I remember working with them, and uh, it was just it was some hard ass work, bro. Like mad respect to them cats. You know what I'm mad saying? Mad respect, bro. Because I can't work. I I'm can't with work you, bro. Like, this Mexican don't work like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, yeah, you I know, see some so. guys. Yeah, we used to work with some guys at uh, the one of our previous restaurants. They would work their construction job in the morning and then change and then come and work the night shift over there. I was like, there's y'all some are some di- fucking savages, yeah, there's bro. There's a different kind y'all of people, bro. Y'all are straight bro. up different, bro. I think literally <laughs> my boy Juan, different, bro. My boy Juan yeah. going in, bro. Yeah. You gotta respect him. <laughs> and bro. he was a beast. They were beasts yeah. too. They were yeah. like going hard. They weren't like taking it easy in the night yeah. shift. They were going nuts. No, Who are we talking about? The guy. The guys from uh, uh, oh, the t- spot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Secret and Him, stuff. Yeah, before that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I was trying to place one. I don't know one. Well, he was, I guess I'm not sure if you were you were there when he was working there. Maybe he was already gone by that point. Right. But he was part of that that clique with those those people. Regardless. They're, they're related savages, somehow. Yeah. yeah, I think they're like 
family cousins to some degree. <laughs> they're related somehow. for real bro they're, i think i'm pretty sure they're cousins <laughs> <laughs> they all go fucking nuts they all go ham it's not a racially charged statement it's true <laughs> Sure. Hey, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know it's funny, bro. Uh, so our new Barbara Bella, um, we, she's our she's our newest member, and uh, <clears throat> she fucking came in one day and she had just graduated barber school and she was looking for a job, and um, she came in and she introduced herself and my cousin. That's actually she's a receptionist, Heather. You know Heather. She, we're related. That's my first cousin. And uh, what is shout anyway? Out Heather. Yeah, shout out Heather, man. She's fucking a big pivotal role. In, how this motherfucker shit operates, All bro. Love. Let's go. Yeah, she keeps everything together. But anyway, so Bella came in, and uh, she's like, my name's Bella Ortiz. And we're like, oh, shit. She got our same last name. But she's mm. from, like, North Austin. So it's a common last name. I'm like, man, we might be related. Just fucking around, right? Bro, uh, we did some research. No. <laughs> our grandfathers are related. So oh, we shit. actually, I think we're, like, third or fourth cousins and um uh, related somehow. What yeah if, what our, if that's actually just like a manipulation tactic that she did no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> to get no, the no, job no. and get in no it's you. not bro we actually did the research she's got you called good, her grandpa and, yeah, yeah no facebook uh, research no so like we are related because my grandfather and i want to say her grandfather are like first cousins or some shit like that and they're actually from Mont- montopolis and I, I knew we had a lot of uh, relatives from Montopolis. It's, really? It's, uh, y'all know where Montopolis is at, right? No. It's in Austin. It's like southeast Austin, I think. Okay. And um, her family, they're into building swimming pools, like underground swimming pools. Hell yeah. And um, that's how we actually found out that we are related because I went I went and um, talked to my mom and she was like, yeah, her, her dad is this and that and her uncle is so-and-so and Sure enough, bro, like, yeah, it's like, oh, shit, we really are related. So, it's, and it was so funny, bro, because it was like, that's such a Mexican thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? But, you know, it was it was pretty dope, though. So, yeah, that's like our third or fourth cousin. That sounds know? like divine, that's so crazy. divine guidance, dude. Her GPS brought her. Yeah. Right oh, and she's you, dope, bro. bro. She's super dope, man. You know, like, I yeah, feel cool. like I've been knowing her forever. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> it was, it was that's hilarious. Badass. Yeah, but it was such a Mexican thing, bro. <laughs> that's tight. <laughs> oh, there was one thing I wanted to bring up, because you were talking about it earlier, and I think I saw some stuff on the walls, but were there some uh, awards y'all had won for this? Um, we ha- we won a best barbershop uh, of, of Hayes two two years in a row. So yeah, oh, yeah, they're actually doing that voting thing again. So um, you know, we're gonna try to make it you know third Let's three go. years in a row. You gotta so. rub some elbows, or what goes into the process of? No man. Uh, yeah, do they have somebody come in here and get a cut, like an undercover cut? Or so, like... Well, so honestly, what it is, bro, is like voting. Yeah, like okay. Yeah, you got to get voted. Who gets man. a vote? So, the community votes. Like businesses or <laughs> yeah, I'm the community. Can I vote? Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I some clients, link, on, link community, online, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, the link like online. Link. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. so we just got to get people to run up your link. Pretty much, bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like when our clients come in here, it's going like, on right now. We get all them to vote. Uh. I don't know if it started. I don't know if it started already or if it's about to start next, the beginning of next month. I know. I know we had to vote to to get the nominations going. Yeah. But I'm not. I don't. I don't think the actual like voting voting has started for like the winner. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to say it starts next month. But when I find out, I'll definitely. Uh, Let's go. Yeah. See what we can do. We'll plug it up, bro. <laughs> Let's Come get on. Another now. dub for my guy. For sure. For yeah, sure. man. But no, that's cool, man. But yeah, we got that. And then, um, what else has we got, bro? Uh, we've gotten like uh, reward uh, awards from the community for like doing like you know our community work that we do like we do the uh, cuts for kids event, um, you know, and uh, we also do like stuff for like you know first responders. We we usually do a nine eleven event too, so it's just stuff like that, bro. As much as we can to give back to the community, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's tight. So yeah, man, it's, it's yeah, pretty awesome. dope. Yeah, I, remember, I think I remember seeing something about the cuts for kids. What is a what is that? Man, it's just an event that we put together um, where. Back to when back to school comes, man. We try we do uh, free cuts and uh, school supplies as well. You know, nice. backpacks, school supplies, and uh, yeah, man, it's just a super dope event that started. I started with the started doing it with the backpack drive. You know, mm-hmm. started with a little backpack drive, and then that turned into you know the f- free cuts for kids and just grew and grew, man. And uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was crazy how that turned into you know a whole big as a community event you know yeah so. for sure it's awesome yeah man it's pretty cool bro yeah it's pretty badass, cool bro. do your hand bro it's tight <clears throat> that's awesome that's tight bro i aspire to to give back to my community in the same kind of way 
It's for cool sure. to do it through your business. Yeah, no, it's it's a good feeling, bro. It's yeah. a good feeling, man. So I think it's important. You know, when you can give back, when you when you can give back, you know, I mean, not everyone's in that position to do that, you know. But I mean, sometimes, sometimes you know, it's a. You think that it, you know, you need to have all this money and this and that, but honestly, bro, sometimes it, it don't even take that. You know, it just takes off. You know, if you offering something you know and for us it was free haircuts you know yeah so that was that was pretty dope man you know helping kids helping families you know especially like the first week of school i mean yeah man. looking your best you know is a i think is important to most kids you know feeling that you know you know that first week of school you want to you want to look school, fresh bro, bro. i gotta set the impression fresh. bro exactly I gotta let these yeah, motherfuckers exactly. know how many, bro. how many kids wouldn't have gotten a cut they would have been looking just bummy the first week of school because their parents yeah. can't afford one or didn't didn't have time or whatever yeah, man. and no, you sure. you know you gave them a different experience for their life you know it's yeah. fucking awesome oh no, it's pretty it's pretty dope bro pretty dope man so, that's that shit bro that's that shit tight man well so well i'll tell you when i was working concrete that was when I realized real quick I don't want to fucking do this shit. I want to do something that feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> Having dirty fingernails and how long did you do that for, dude? I don't know, like say eight, a year, maybe year for? and a half, eighteen oh, okay. months, maybe. I think I did a summer internship and then I left for a while and then I right. got you came back because you came were back. there for a couple months, maybe like three months, and then yeah, then you were gone for a bit and then you came back later on. I'm how sure old were you when you when you were doing that? Twenty. Twenty. Oh okay. yeah, man. Yeah, I came back like when I was twenty-one, I think. So, um, but yeah, just dude, yeah. Sometimes doing something you really, really dislike makes you realize how badly you want to do something you like. You <laughs> oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? For sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, bro. It's sure. scary, bro. It's scary. Fuck that. But also I feel like it was perfect, like it was perfect though. I worked it with Justin and then we would perform there was I remember this one memory super vivid all the time where we did a show and then we stayed up all night and then came back to work like you know, we did the show on a Tuesday night and just stayed up till 6 a.m. on Wednesday and came into work. It was kind of a flexible <laughs> schedule, so we could come yeah. in early and leave early if we wanted. Yeah. And like uh, the same way you were talking about, you know, Bella ending up in your shop. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there, sometimes like where you're at is just like the perfect place for you to be. It's not like you really had like we think you have choice and you could choose anything. But I also like with my free will choice, I chose you to be my barber. But I also feel like that was kind of meant to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just like. I don't know. Life's a crazy thing like that, you know? It is. No, it really is, man. It I think really it comes... Is, bro. It really is more about just being who you're supposed to be or being who you're not supposed to be. And you're going to be in the same places, in the same chapters, with the same relationships to some degree, but you're either going to be more of who you're supposed to be or less of who you're supposed to be. And maybe like, you know, sometimes you can miss an opportunity and if you were who you're supposed to be, you get that opportunity and that's like a direct fork in your experience maybe for what could be and what is. But it seems to me that like things are not predetermined, but like more determined. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like it's written, but I don't want to say we don't have free will because we obviously do. Right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? But I don't know. It just like it's hard to ignore yeah. the fact that I feel like I'm supposed to be in these places yeah. where I'm supposed to be. And then like I wouldn't have I going to school with Justin was like the perfect thing in the world. I'm so happy I didn't go to college anywhere else, you know? Um. So like did you... Almost go to any other like different colleges. Like making like, that choice, I, I had, like what like what other college were you like kind of leaning towards other than Texas State? There was if you had one. I mean, I mean, there's a, a college in Abilene called McMurray that I visited oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. two times, uh -huh. and um, I, I wanted to play My basketball went for them. To that one, McMurray, really? Yeah, yeah. There were a small school. It was something like eighty percent of the students were student athletes there, mm -hmm. so it was really like a school you went to to go play sports. Yeah, and it was I think it was a Methodist school. Yeah. And my dad's a Methodist pastor, so there was kind of like an automatic connection. Mm -hmm. And um, I applied for this program, and I do this interview, and it's for like a scholarship. And I get all the way to the end of the interview, and I think I'm like doing good, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And I, at the end, I'm like, <laughs> you know. I'm crushing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm just like, they say something about, um, you know that they're real competitive or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, me too. Like, I don't really want any Baptist, pre any Baptist professors this year or something like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're like, we get real competitive around here. We don't like uh, Abilene Christian, you know, don't, if they're trying to interested in you, you know, don't, don't give them too much of your time or too much of your attention. You know, we mm -hmm. want you right here. I was like, I'm real competitive too, man. Just uh, no, like no Baptist prof professors. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I can't even say it now because I cringe so hard so many times about saying that because it was a Methodist school and I was just fucking around. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> And then it was just like someone hit like an off note oh, on a piano, God, like, and everyone was just like, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> I was just like, 
I was just I was just kidding, guys. Like, <laughs> chill. Josh and they're like, all right, Mr. Millet. I have a done. great day. I think we're done here. Today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we we've heard enough. So that was it. We've heard enough. Well, they didn't offer me a scholarship. That's for sure. <laughs> <Those> fuckers. <laughs> I still thought about going there though, uh-huh. just because I was confident I could play basketball there. Yeah. Especially working my ass off. You know, what I'm saying singularly focused on that. Yeah. But uh, there was just a voice in my head that was like, hanging out with Justin. I was always having the best time of my life, and I I always thought about maybe us working together one day or doing the entrepreneurship thing with Justin or something. And I, I don't know, bro. It's just like. The idea of going to college with Justin was just felt like in that moment of like, what do I actually want to do here? I was mm-hmm. like, I think I, I want to actually do that. Like Justin's there. We've never actually been going to the same school together since elementary school. Like we'll be able to hang out, like experience this thing together, figure out if we can make content or be, I, I didn't even have the yeah. idea fully developed. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, but right, just right. something I figured I figured it out. And Sam Marcus, I'm sure, is a lot more funner than fucking Abilene. Uh, yeah, dude, for yeah, real. Right. <laughs> I was going to um, Sam Marcus because Justin was there a year before me, two mm-hmm. years before me. So mm-hmm. I was going down there to hang out with them a lot and yeah. fell in love with it, bro. Yeah. Like it, it was amazing, when, especially a little bit younger. Like as an older person, I, I don't have the same kind of like right. love for it as when I was 18. Right, right, right. C- playing spike ball on the intramural football field, and just fucking yeah. going back and slamming a beer. And I was just like, this is insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, going to the rec center, going to get some fucking food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the river's right there too. The river, of course. You know. The experience was just, I was just like, oh, more of that. That's that's life right For there. Sure. That's fire. For sure. So yeah, that feeling process, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of always kind of going where I want to go to mm-hmm. some degree, you know? Mm-hmm. Sounds selfish, but... I th- like I'm happy I do it, yeah. you know. No, for sure, man. So, sometimes you gotta be a little selfish. Well, it's my life, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? yeah. There's got to be some self involved. Yeah, yeah. That self love, that self care, that self respect. Yeah, self discipline. Doing what you want to do matters. For sure, man. Yeah, you gotta enjoy sure. this shit, bro. You only get one. Yeah, you only get one. Ain't nobody else experiencing what you're experiencing. No, no, man. It's you. It's all uniquely you. It's all you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's tight. You were asking earlier, if, where, where does passion come from? Do you think the same right. thing for like that something that you want to do is in there somewhere? It's coming from somewhere. Does everyone have something that they could tap into and, and lock into that and be actualized through the pursuit of that? I mean, I think everyone does. It's just I think so up too. to you. You have to, do you, you have to unlock it. You know what I'm saying? Learn um, yourself. Know yeah. yourself. I want to say yes. Like as a, like a fundamental belief of what's happening in life, I think that's Everybody true. Has right? It, bro. I Everybody think so. I like to it. believe that, at least in my in my own matrix. Yeah. And maybe my belief of that is what makes it true in my matrix. Mm. I'm it's not like, sure if it's objectively true for everybody. It's like you know, I'm sure y'all know people too, like who are doing something that they obviously don't want to do, and you know what they're good at because you know you might know this person or you know you might seen them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I, I know a few people who are like, bro you're fucking working at this job or you're doing this this profession that i know you're not happy at doing but you know i'm like bro you were a dope ass fucking you know i don't know motherfucking dj you know or baker you were super dope at you know fucking building shit or whatever you know and it's Mm -hmm. like i can see that was your passion but they obviously didn't follow it you know what i'm saying and i think it's up to that person to go and actually follow it pursue it and really you know bring it to life you know and use it dude i got so really i think high. everybody has it you know what i'm saying yeah I, just, th- I think so too it's just up to them like do they want to use it do they want to follow it you know but mm-hmm. i mean i think maybe it's like it's like just quit being a bitch and come on you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> dude, i'm trying to say i got do it do it <laughs> i get i got blasted on super mega multivitamins which means like how we say on the podcast that we took some like uh-huh, like uh-huh. mushrooms like uh-huh. mario toadstool mario party toadstools uh-huh. tripping off them toadstools Woo! and dude i was like out there right and i remember just like so clearly thinking that like that is what we're here to do is to go for that thing that we're actually dumb. We're so dumb <laughs> for doing anything else. Right. For working a job that you're miserable at for 10 years. Why? Because you feel safe or because it pays the bills. Like, I guess you can't just like quit and then start paying your bills with no like right. action involved. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you got to you gotta go for that thing. Everything else is kind of a lie to like enslave you almost to working for someone else's profit. Mm-hmm. And like you can live that life if you want. Enslaved is a really harsh word. But if you're right. going to like do that for your whole life and never really like pursue that thing inside of you, like what did you do with your life? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And I, I, maybe that's like a, some people don't think that way. Some right, people right. really don't think that way. Right. But 
in my most clear, you know, psychotic state or whatever you'd call a psychedelic state. I'm not sure. <laughs> in that moment of like pure thinking, I was just like, this is an obvious, like you cannot waste your, No one should waste their life like that. You know? Cause and then at the end of the day, bro, you're not happy. Like to my thing, bro, is like to make it simple is do what makes you fucking happy. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, Whatever whatever you're happy at doing, I think that's what you should be fucking doing, you know? Because then at the end of the day you wake up in the morning and it and and it don't feel like work. You know, you don't you're not dreading like to go like I don't dread to come cut hair. Like I love to cut hair. Dude, that you know dread saying, is one bro? of the worst things in life. Like mm-hmm. like yeah, there's some days when like especially like a couple like in my twenties when I wasn't like healthy, there'd be days when like my body didn't you know, like I wasn't feeling good or whatever, you know, I wasn't feeling my best, but Never like, damn, I don't want to cut hair no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, never. I've never felt like that, bro. Mm-hmm. Because I love, I love to do what you know. I love to do what I do every day. You know what I'm yeah. saying, bro? Yeah, that's and not so. shit, bro. I think there's a, I don't know. I think I've seen it on Instagram. It's like a Japanese saying, "Ikigai." I don't know. So it's one of those. I've seen a whole bunch of different ones. I think that phrase in Japanese is like just trying to find what you're like, what you're like the thing we're trying to talk about, mm-hmm. trying to articulate whatever your passion is, whatever that thing is that you should be doing here. It's like it's a yeah, combination of like something that you're good at, something that you enjoy to do, something that could benefit others, mm-hmm. and then you can get paid for it. Yep. If you can like find yeah. something that fits all four of those things, it's like yeah. that that's your that's that's what you're here to do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I think for sure. that's kind of what we're talking about. That, but that, that hits it right on right on the head, bro. Yeah, I think it's like because uh, I guess we're talking about so in, in some sense it is kind of like predetermined, but in the in the same sense it's not predetermined right. at all because we have free will. Right. Right. But it is kind of pre like we're we're suggesting that there might be something predetermined about our nature of like just our, our existence. Like you're you're predeterminedly supposed to be a fucking surgeon. Like you're just supposed to like you're yeah. just you have the everything about you and your genetic coding is pointing you towards being a surgeon. Yeah. Or whatever you know what I'm saying. So yeah. it is kind of predetermined in that nature. Or like you're supposed to be a barber. Like right. we're, we're supposed to be. Whatever the fuck we're supposed to be, right? right. Artists, artists. <laughs> yeah, person, producers, whatever the fuck, production producers, music, entrepreneurs. Like, yeah. So maybe there is some sort of like fixed, predetermined aspect to it, but we have the option to fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? Or we right. have the option to to veer away from that path and right. do our own thing, right? Based on whatever the fuck's going on in our minds. You know I mean, and, and I I think what's super dope too is like, I feel like once once you you know follow what you're supposed to do, I think that's when like the more doors open up to different avenues that, that are connected with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, mm-hmm. like y'all, for instance, you know, y'all started the music thing, right. you know, and now y'all are trickling into the content creating and, and podcasting, right. you know, and it, you're, y'all are still using y'all's voice. Y'all are still using y'all create y'all's creativity to mm-hmm. still, you know, do what y'all do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and uh, I, I think, uh, I think it's, I think that's one of the most like special things, bro, about being an entrepreneur and following, you know, your path and following your passion. That when you when you do that, bro, like other shit starts to open up for you, you know. And um, it's like a white rabbit effect. Once you start yeah. following that white rabbit, the, yeah, bro, it's not the path necessarily you thought you were going down, but you're going down the path. Different things will open up. The music leads to the podcast, and the podcast leads to the content production. The content mm-hmm. production leads to marketing. Like, there's no way to tell how to get down this avenue except for following that little intuition and going taking that next step you know yeah i think that that's important no matter what it looks like it might look stupid right now for sure but it's not it's your gut it's your heart it's your it's gotta follow it gps you know you gotta follow it bro yeah yeah sure man there's something there there's something there i think joe rogan has a guest i think we talked about it he has a guest you listen to joe rogan yes but i haven't listened to him recently Okay. But yeah, no. Yeah, I, it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fall in and out of Love right. some Joe. Joe right. Rogan. Love me some Joe. Right, right, right. For sure. For sure. I mean, fuck, yeah. bro. <laughs> He's like the podcast fucking. He's the pod father, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, no, for sure. Through and through, bro. He fucking opened the lane for everybody. He definitely did, bro. But he and, had and a, now he's down the road, fucking bro. You know, come so, on, bro. bro. Honestly, it's we could run into him on accident. He yeah. did a special in San Antonio. Damn, that's crazy, man. That's, that's crazy, bro. Bro, right down the fucking street, Central Texas. Honestly, dog. it was great marketing for my our business because Joe Rogan just represents people listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, podcasts are millions of people do listen to him, huh? <laughs> so it's cool to think about like. I think he's a great representation of why you should do a podcast or why anybody could do a podcast mm-hmm. is like that guy has a whole empire. He's a multi-millionaire because of his podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's really cool because if he was still in California, it wouldn't be as like relevant. So when I point to Joe Rogan now, it's mm-hmm. like he's super on everybody's mind, you know? Yeah. It's cool. It feels like one of those things that's just perfect timing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. yeah podcast and, and now up. Austin's like fucking booming. You know what he, I'm saying, bro? Like crazy. Austin's crazy now. <laughs> 
Austin's crazy. I mean, all of Central Texas is. You know what I'm saying? But post COVID, Austin, Austin in particular is nuts right now. Yeah. People coming from California. People coming from New York. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even here in Kyle, bro. Like, I we get we get new clients every day, bro. And it's like I'm amazed, like where these motherfuckers moved from. You know? Really? really? It's nuts, bro. Like California, New York, Florida. You know, fucking Montana. You know, I mean all kinds of different states bro and like and it's all because it's it's like close to austin you know like huh. central texas is crazy bro you know it's insane yeah texas is tight i fucking love texas mm-hmm. but central texas uh, like texas. in specific is like just booming bro you mm-hmm. know it really is man so it's, it's good for business you know absolutely it's good for business yeah, another <laughs> mecca. this is another mecca mecca city now yep one of um, the most popular or like largest growing for sure mm-hmm. fastest growing for sure most definitely, bro. Just popping. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But Joe, yeah, Joe had a guest on. He was talking, I think, I forget what his, I think maybe he runs some sort of homeless shelters in Austin. I forget the guest's name and what the company or organization that he was working with is, but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. And they were just talking about what they do. And uh, the guest was talking specifically about, yeah, people's like childhood. And like, I guess he drew the analogy to it to be like a, like embers, like in a fire, you know what I'm saying? Like we all have, and then they stem from like your childhood. So I guess that kind of ties in what we're talking about, about like it might be kind of like predetermined or like mm-hmm. kind of innately in you, like what you're supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. like the fullest mm-hmm. expression of you, whatever your thing is, mm-hmm. it's in you already. And like he was saying that you could find it in childhood, like whatever you did as a kid and you were like enjoying and spending your time doing and like whenever you were playing pretend or whatever mm-hmm. you were just enjoying your life as a child, like it really, it could stem from that place. Like if you, if you want to like reconnect with that and rekindle that flame, then maybe look to your childhood and see what things you were doing, what interests you, what, what caught your sense. attention. Yeah. That makes sense, bro. You can fan that shit and you yeah. can just bring it back into the full, oh, that's what we're doing here. That's what yeah, I'm doing sure. here. That's who you are. Just you, It was a younger version of you expressing yourself back then, but it's also probably more true and more honest. So I, I don't think that goes away, you know? Yeah, right. No. It's yeah. you. I was grown kids. Yeah, we're always remembering our dreams. Like, there's always yeah. a part of me that still wants to be an, a professional athlete or thinks about doing it in another yeah. life or whatever it is. Yeah. I, I take those things and I try to apply it to myself every day. You know, like the kind of consistency or discipline or dedication it takes to be like. I don't. I don't want to. I never want to tell myself that I. It, it, I couldn't do that. Like I wasn't good enough or I didn't have the discipline for it that like other people, sure, they have it. But me, it was mm. never going to happen for me. Right. Like just based on my stats of personal, whatever the hell I have going on here in my mind. Yeah. So that's why like now I'm still trying to like, I want to run into a professional athlete and not feel like he's a superhero and I'm a normal person. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So that, like that kind of, but that's because of that dream that I had when I was a kid, but it still plays out in my life now. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's a good thing. I think that that's integrating yourself fully whereas i guess maybe some people could say like yeah you got to move on and like oh stuff and yeah re- reshape yourself and stuff like that be realistic be realistic yeah right but like fuck you yeah right <laughs> how many i don't think anybody's grandpa doesn't have a dream that they think about sometimes you know what i'm saying or right. a passion they wish they pursued a little bit more i think that's probably like natural with age you wish you would have done a little more of this and a little more of that you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you're just leaving that on the table if you're not pursuing it when you have time you know yeah no for sure man Man, if you had one tip for a, a an entrepreneur who's not an entrepreneur yet, someone with the idea, with the passion, with the drive, and they they're ready to, they hear you say jump into the pool and they're down. It's like what's an actionable step for them? Well, I, one is just just doing it right. But I think like a big thing that I would tell people, bro, that um, I feel like uh, sometimes I didn't follow myself was don't let outside distractions or like exterior, you know voices you know other people tell you that you can't or that you shouldn't you know because man there's there's been times bro when i had an idea in my head you know and i expressed it to somebody who who wasn't in the in that kind of like mindset or entrepreneurial mindset or whatever yeah and they told me like no i don't think you should you know and then like fucking a month or two later like i see this other guy or this other person with the same idea that i had you know brought it to life and i'm like why the fuck did i listen to you Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like so like Mm -hmm. if it's if it's one thing i could tell someone you know that's starting is uh man just don't listen to no one no other people's opinions or voices bro because at the end of the day they're not you you know what i'm saying they Mm -hmm. they're they're not they're not in your head you know they don't have the same vision as you 
you know, so, and uh, I think too, just, uh, you know, dealing with being in business and dealing with other partners and people, you know, that don't have the same vision as you is like, man, it's, it can fuck you up, you know, it can definitely fuck you up. So I definitely would just, yeah, try to silence all the critics, all the, all the, all the outside noise, you know, and, and people's opinions, you know, don't pay no mind to it, you know, and try to block it out as much as you can, mm -hmm. you know, because honestly, bro, that shit can, it can really put a stump on your growth, you know, and, and it can, yeah. it can really, it can really do some damage, you know. There's a fine line yeah. between being confident and being hard headed. Right. You know, what, how do you tell that line? Um, I think with that, bro, it's like being confident is believing in yourself, right? You know, believing in yourself and knowing that you can do whatever you're trying to do. But being hard headed is like, you know, not listening to people that either are know what the fuck they're talking about or in the position that you want to get to. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like motherfuckers who don't want to like listen to, to, you know, people who can obviously help them. Yeah. I think that I think that's when it's like, all right, bro, like, what are you fucking doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you being a dumbass? You know, like, I think you need you need those those um you know role models or right. you know the um mentors your mentors you know yeah. I, I think it's important to have to definitely have uh some mentors in your life bro especially you know if it's some if it's someone in the position that you're trying to get to you know absolutely i, I think you know that's that's like like when i told y'all i traveled to another state to go work with you know with some guys who obviously know more knowledge about me you know more knowledge than me and um i think it's important for you to find people that that you can uh, outsource that knowledge and you know listen to them you know um so yeah man i think i think that's when that that line is you know yeah so there's advice yeah, that you should be taking that you're mm -hmm. not taking yeah and and you probably know deep in your heart that it's advice you should hear and you're not doing it because you've got your own mental stuff going on mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. whereas you know, when people tell you what you shouldn't be doing and you know that in your heart that they're wrong and you know that you have this passion and this vision, that that's confidence. That's that's where you tune out right. the outside noise right, and you bro. lock in. Right. That's but nice. when but when there is something that you do hear that you know that, you know, this does carry some type of value or some type of weight, you know, yeah. that's when you need to don't be hard headed and like, you know, and listen, you know, and implement whatever they're trying to help you with, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. So that's yeah, a fine line. It's a fine line. Bro. Yeah, you gotta sure. choose what to let in to your matrix you know what i'm saying what to accept because yeah if you're if, you're, if you let in and you're like in your first example they're talking about silence silencing the voice and like the critics you know because like yeah those voices could kill your dream you know what i'm saying they can bro because you're you are the i forget where i've heard this or where i've seen this but it's like i think maybe maybe matthew mcconaughey but like you are the only person who can kill your dream you know what i'm saying like you're the only one who could really let it die right like others can try to help you kill it but right. like ultimately it comes down, down to, to you. you yeah to decide, oh yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Yes. Or like I am gonna do this, fuck you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like when I started my business, bro, and I started when I opened up my first location, man, I, I remember I uh I had a few family members who were like, dude, you shouldn't do that. Like you should not do it. Like I think I think it's pretty foolish for you to go and start your business so young, you know? And and yeah, maybe it was. But that was them talking from their fear. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying, bro? Yeah, for their own story. It's like you can't you can't project your fear onto me because I'm not you and yeah. you ain't me. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you don't have the passion that I have for for what I got going on. Exactly. And maybe you did, but you didn't pursue that. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And man, that you know, that shit that shit fucked me up. You know what I'm saying? Like even yeah. to this day when you know, that family member it was someone who I was really close with and who I really looked up to, you know, yeah. and it was like me and that, you know, I'm never, I haven't felt the same about that person ever since. Dude, you know I, what I'm I know what you're talking about. It, you when know? someone says something like that, and it's because really deep down, I am that dreamer. Like, that's that's me at my most fundamental we level. We all are as right? human beings. Mm -hmm. and we all are, bro. Someone tells you that they don't believe in you or they can't see your vision coming to life. And it's just... Dude, Especially someone close to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? That shit changes. It changes something in you. Because mm -hmm. it's like almost like you have to prove them wrong now. You mm -hmm. know? And that sucks because mm -hmm. like you you don't want that for someone you love you know right but right. 
I think it is speaking out of fear more than anything. That's what yeah, it is. That's what it if is. If anybody bro. tells me fucking anything that they're interested in, any kind of passion, all I do is say that's that's awesome, man. Like yeah. keep going. Don't yeah. stop. Keep me going. Too. Yeah. How fucking hard is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And to, to for someone you love, you know what I'm saying? To look yeah. at them and say, nah, I don't believe in you. Yeah. Maybe other people, I guess, yeah, I guess they're doing it. They must have something you don't yeah. have. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, bro, what are you talking about? Oh, you know? For sure, man. That's clearly <laughs> the voice of fear speaking out. Not yep. not a rational, loving, you know. Any human just has that impulse to love and just uplift, you know? Yeah, if you're coming at like if you're if you're a parent and your child comes up to you with like a idea, you need <laughs> yeah. to like handle it gently, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Or like oh like give encouragement and fuel f- yeah. to the fire. But if it's a bad idea, you gotta, you gotta kinda nip it in the butt. Right, right. Or right. you can try to make it better, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to help, like let's let's fucking get some M's here, kid. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Well our ideas it's tough though, because like with our idea, you know, taking out an investment yourself, so you have like financial liability and stuff like that. You know, someone might, if they didn't believe in your business idea, that they, they might be good advice to not do that yet. You know, mm-hmm. that's why it's that hard headed and confidence line is so, is so thin. Am I, am I being dumb by not taking your advice or is your advice bad advice? You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But I feel like, you know, you that's know the saying? thing, you know, you <laughs> always know deep you down, know, bro. You dude, know. I want to just put it on a t-shirt. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, motherfucker. That's you the answer know. to a lot of questions is like, yeah, but like, you know. Deep yeah. down, you know, you, you know? know, the answer yeah. is, you know, you fucking know, dude. Yeah. The intuition, bro. And I believe know? in like being conservative and having patience. And I know that I'm quick to pull the trigger on a lot of stuff. I'll just be like, I'll do it. Let's do it. Let's go for it. Yeah. Like that's kind of my natural predisposition. But I feel like we were really conservative and really patient. It took a lot of time, mm-hmm. played out every option, you know, really, really invested a lot of ourselves into a lot of potential realities. And it was just like, it's this, it's mm-hmm. this. And the timing is right now. And I've spent enough time being patient and conservative and responsible and like, you know, hedging my bets to know that this is when it's, we should go all in, yep. you know? And I think that that also helps. It helped me to not feel like I was making a mistake. It helped me to feel like this is a good decision mm-hmm. because I was patient with it, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know what? Sometimes, bro, you just got to do shit, bro. You just got to do it, man. Like, fucking do I was, it, I was, uh, I, I liked, uh, I listened to, um, a book by 50 Cent. It's an, I, I'm, with this book, I like to listen to it, the audio version, like when I'm working out or I'm jogging or I'm doing something. Does he read it? Uh, yeah, he narrates it. It's That's his. Sorry. It's his book. It's called uh, Power or something. No, 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 no. Um, Hustle smarter, not harder. I believe is the title of it. He has one called Power. It's called a fifty, the fiftieth law of power. I was okay. just listening to that this morning, actually, on my walk. Really? But um, you take a walk, and, in the bro. Box? That's why I like Fifty Cent a lot, bro. Because low key, dog, he's a fucking like just business savvy like he that motherfucker's smart bro you know what i'm saying that, that, that thought crossed my matrix whenever he declared bankruptcy uh, a while yeah. back i'm like maybe he's and it was like it was a financial move bro or whatever, he's you know what i'm saying low key like, bro oh, he's, smart. he's a smart business mm-hmm. you know not low key but i mean he high key, he's a he's he's a smart business individual you think bro. of him as a rapper actor you don't always think about him as like the i don't look at him like that mogul. no more i look at him <laughs> like a business mogul you know because yeah, i actually read his okay. books listen to his po- you know all that shit so anyways uh and that book he there's a chapter where he's talking about um he's talking he's telling a story and he's talking about jamie fox and um jamie fox is uh t- talking to one of his guys and uh he's telling he's talking about 50 cent how 50 cent the re- the reason why 50 cent is uh you know where his success he's successful and where he's at is because he just does shit you know what i'm saying bro like he's just constantly always trying to have his hands in something you know what i'm saying bro and I think a lot of times, bro, and I, and I even revert back to myself, bro, like, like there's times, bro, when you're an entrepreneur, man, when you're going up, you know what I'm saying? And then there's times when you're, you're just kind of like, you know, at a standstill. And then there's times when you're dropping, you know what I'm saying, bro? And like, mm. when I look back on things in my career and in my business, like, the I feel like when I was going up the most is when I was just constantly doing shit, bro. Whether it was stuff with the community, whether it was making skits, you know what I'm saying, bro? Whether it was going to barber schools and doing classes and demos for up and coming barbers. Like when I was doing my best and I was feeling like my, at my most is when I was just constantly doing shit, bro. Hmm. You know, and there's times, bro, when I hit, when I hit these plateaus, man. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's the times when I'm not, when I'm not, doing what i'm supposed to be doing you know what i'm saying bro and yeah. i'm just kind of like laying low you know and, and at times you need that you know what i'm saying there's times when you need like just to kind of like relax relax bro and like kind of like you know tend to yourself or do whatever you need to do even out but 
bro, you like <laughs> If you just stay in that type of like mindset or mode, it's it's gonna kill you. You know what I'm saying, bro? So, man, sometimes you just need to do shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent, bro. So, hundred fucking percent. You know, uh, y'all, y'all, I recommend y'all listen to to his book, bro. Or read it or whatever. Yeah. Because for entrepreneurs, I have that like, book on my bookshelf. I, I got it from Target. Well, I remember buying it. But yeah. I haven't read it yet. You need to read it, bro. Or like I said, listen, listen, to, listen to the audio version. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying, bro? Like, like it, it's dope listening to audio because because it's dope listening to Fifty's voice tell the story. You know, yeah, what I'm that's tight. I love that shit. So you yeah. know, but yeah, bro, definitely, I'll send it to y'all. I, I got it. I'll send it to y'all. But yeah, man, hell yeah, that's something that I remember, and I think that uh, yeah, I, I like to Dude, I like shit. to look at it back with my with my story and and my career and you know. Jumping in that pool really changed everything. Yeah, man. Just going for yeah, it. Yeah, bro. It's like, yeah, it's such a, life has such a series of like paradoxes and things that are like one way and the other way and like opposites, but you need to like do them at the same time or it's like, you need to be, because I've also heard that you need to be like stubborn about your goals, you know, to a degree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to be stubborn about your goals, but open enough to let the the positive and the gen, like genuinely uplifting mm-hmm. vib- like uh, information like come to you. Yeah. So it's like you need to be open and closed at the same time. Yeah. yeah. It's like fuck the bullshit. But like, do you have anything good for me? Okay, yeah. no. Then fuck the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you gotta have that filter. You gotta have yeah. that filter, bro. You gotta, yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta know what you need to let come in, what you you need to let stay stuck on that filter, bro, mm-hmm. and, and not come in, you yeah. know? So you know, it's and I think working out, being healthy, you know what I'm saying, bro, like that's a big, you know, pivotal role in it too, bro. You really? know? Yeah, man. Cause I feel like if if you're not if you ain't healthy, you know what I'm saying? You're not taking care of yourself physically, mentally it's going to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying, bro? And mm-hmm. I feel like mentally once once your mens- once your like mentally is not working right, disaster. Bro, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, especially so trying to especially bro. trying to be a business owner. Well, life's hard enough. Yeah, the choices are hard right. enough. Decisions you got to make. So right. you need that mental sharp and clear cuz it's it's already difficult. You don't yeah, need man. to and, handicap and physically, more. you need to be you need to be right, you know? Yeah, I think it's all, it's I believe- all connected. You know what I'm saying? It's all connected. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I believe in that too. Bro. Mental, spiritual, emotional, physical. Mm-hmm. It's all connected mm-hmm. somehow. You know what I'm saying? I'm interested to know where you draw the connection between taking care of yourself and being successful in businesses. Um, Like like how it correlates together? Yeah. Because I, I assume you say it's a tip for young entrepreneurs is to stay on top of your health and fitness as well. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think it starts with that. You know? I think it starts with your with your health. I mean... At the end of the day, that's all we got. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And our health, our body, that's our that's the machine, you know? Yeah. And if we're not taking care of that, like we can't like and I, I, I say that's why you need to be selfish. Because like if you ain't selfish for yourself at first, you can't offer nothing to others. You can't offer nothing to your to your spouse or your kids or your team and business, you know? Like yeah. if, if you're not taking care of yourself and and you know, you ain't, you know, fucking you know, working how you need to be working, bro. You, you can't, you can't function. You know, your your business can't function. You, your family can't function. You know, like especially yeah. us men. You know, being the being the leaders. You know, naturally. And uh, I think it, it starts with it starts with yourself. Starts with your health. You know, I think it's very important, bro. Like in my twenties, I was unhealthy than a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I would work up here all day. I wouldn't eat when I'd get home, bro. I'd fucking binge eat, you know what I'm saying? On top of that, I was just eating shit, you know, sugars, <laughs> fat, you know, and bro, all my twenties, I, I felt like shit, bro, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, I think, uh, I don't, I don't think, I know my business suffered, my family suffered, I suffered from it, you know. And uh, once I hit my late twenties and really started like, you know, being conscious of like my health and being mindful of it, I think that's when everything changed for me, bro. You yeah. know. Or I know that's when everything changed for me. Starting to turn around. You know, man. What do you do? Or like, what's some of your routine that you would... Well, when COVID hit is when I really took it serious, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, once COVID hit, because I was in... Like, I, bro, I was scared as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> man, if I catch COVID, I'm already overweight. Oh, you know no. what I'm saying, bro? Like, I'm unhealthy. I'm like, at risk. Yeah. Like, you know, so like, what I started doing was walking. That was like my... That's, that that's that was my main that's, thing, bro. That's like, some shit. I started walking, mm-hmm. you know, we, me and me and my wife would go to like the track at, at this uh, middle school down here called Wallace. Um, and uh, we would just walk on the track, bro. We'd do like two miles, started off with like a mile and a half, went to two and three. Um, and then now, you know, uh, I'm in the gym, bro, four to five times out the week. Let's go. Um, I kind of slacked off last week, you know what I'm saying? I, I slacked mm-hmm. off last week a little bit, bro, but... Yeah, like I've been going to the you went gym. Went to a wedding. It's all right. It's a wedding, you know. 
life, uh, life happens. Yeah. And uh, when actually we we actually too, uh, we were in Corpus for a few days because my wife's trying to get a daycare going. Okay. So she has some classes she had to go do up there. So we were like that, open that, her own daycare. Yeah, she wants to open, she wants That's to start lit. off at the house in home daycare, yeah. and then eventually you know start with the facility. That's money, business. bro. Yeah, man, we're trying to make things happen, bro. You know, That's but so go. that that definitely threw, threw my schedule off. And then, um, yeah, man, but for like the past year, year and a half, two years, bro, I've been been in the gym. You know, uh, started focusing better on my eating. You know, started eating more, a lot more healthier now. You know, uh, chicken, turkey. You know, that's it, baby. Uh, beef, you know what I'm saying, bro? Uh, trying to stay uh, stay away from sugars as much as I can, yeah. you know? Um, so, yeah, man. Yeah, but, yeah, I try to get a walk in in the morning, bro. I live by the river. So, that, that that's a... That's something cool that I like to take advantage of, bro. Walking by the river. Justin's a big morning in, walk in the person. mornings when yeah. no one when no one's at the river. You know what I'm saying? Like it's man, it's the river in San Marcos is nice, bro, when no one's there. <laughs> <laughs> like when no one's there, it's bro, it's peaceful as fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying, bro? Oh, absolutely. And uh, you know, I like so I like to do that. So, uh take take a little bowl with me, you know. Hit, hey. hit you know, get a couple hits out the bowl, you know what I'm saying? We get chilling. My, yeah, chilling, you know, chilling by the river, a little zen. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, and then uh and in the evenings, I like to go to the gym, but I'm trying to I'm trying to start going in the morning just yeah. so I, I can have more time, you know, to do other stuff. I love, you know? Yeah, I love that shit, bro. Getting it done in the morning, yeah, or like bro. early in the day, just yeah. so the rest of your day is yours. I'm just like, yeah, yep. I, I, I was we were going uh, me and my homie Los, we were going uh, during our lunch to the gym. That was cool. You know what I'm saying? But it gets a little hectic sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Some, especially like cutting hair. Like some cuts may take longer than others, so mm. like it starts cutting into the like the gym time, and then you want I want to be back in time for my next cut, you know. So of course we kind of stop doing that, but I'm trying to st- I'm trying to go in the mornings uh, more now for sure. Yeah. So getting that uh, endocrine system dramatically changed through the workout at the mm-hmm. start of the day changes the whole day definitely. It's mm-hmm. nice, dude. And then I started hooping again more. You nice. Know? Oh, That's yeah. fun, bro. You know, going to because I go work out at Golds. Okay. So like, you know, we play with a lot of college students and shit, and it's fun playing with them, bro. Because like, be popping. Yeah, yeah, popping no, it, it's cool. But then sometimes like they look at us like we're old, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> we get on the court, you know, and uh, you know, it's fun to bust their ass, and then and then mm-hmm. you know the next game they're like, all right, bet, you know, this guy can play. So now when we go to the gym, now these motherfuckers are like, hey, you gonna play? Hey, what's up? You know, it's it's cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a good feeling, bro. Big you know? community vibes yeah. for sure. So it's dope, bro. But yeah, I'm starting hooping again, man. Oh, and then that's that's man. I love to hoop, bro. Like I still love to hoop. You know what you I'm saying? Bro. Uh, yeah. Usually, yeah, yeah. I'm a facilitator, bro. So okay. like, yeah, <laughs> I'm the motherfucker that like, hey, bro. You might not think I see you, but like I see you from my peripheral. I'm I'm gonna hit you. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. So like, I I love to I love to yeah I love to get you know the plays going, bro, and finding motherfuckers open and shit like that. But I'm also a shooter too. So watch out. <laughs> so you know, do it no, all. But, yeah. knock down. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah, mean, growing up, bro. Fuck, growing bro. up, that was me. I, I was, I was, you know, I, I had a good handle. That was, that was my, that was my game, bro. I was quick. Mm-hmm. Had a good handle. Uh, I was a big and one fan back in the day, bro. So I like, love that shit, bro. Naturally, bro, I've just always been good with handling the ball. You know yeah. what I'm saying, bro? Like, but I was like watching that shit when it's VHS. Mm-hmm. So I would like record the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> You know, like growing up in a like Hispanic Mexican culture, like my grandparents, y'all know what a novella is? Yeah. Uh, okay. So like they would like record their novellas, bro, right? Yeah. So I would have to like pick the, I would have to like steal their tapes, bro. Find the old one. Yeah. And like re-record <laughs> that shit. And then of course I'd get in trouble for it later. But like, yeah, I would record the, I would record the episodes, dog. And, like, like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, bro. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like it was, but yeah, I was, I was. The grew professor. Up, I grew up in that era, dog. You know, record, the, record the episodes. Yeah. Go back and watch a move and put it in slow motion to learn it and study it. Yeah, bro. Like it was, man. That's all I did was was hoop, bro. Yeah. Like when I said that's all Love I did, basketball. that's all I did, bro. Like I feel you. From morning, you know what I'm saying, go to school. I would like fucking skip like lunch to go like jump in like my homies PE class and hoop with mm-hmm. them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then of course after school, like man, it was just uh it was my life, bro. Ball was life at the time. Ball was life. Like, that's when ball was life was real. Like motherfuckers actually had to be good to get on ball is life. Nowadays, you know, you just got to pay, you know, somebody and put you on there. Yeah, that's crazy. Back then, that's when, like, ball was actually live. <laughs> <laughs> now, ball is not life at all. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. You had, you had to be really good back in the day. That was like O.J. Mayo, you know, and O.J. Mayo, yeah. Brandon Jennings. Like, them oh, high school. Yeah. yeah, bro. Like, those, those high school, like, high school tapes, those motherfuckers were good, bro. You yeah. know? 
But, you know, hey, man. The game changes, bro. In another life. In another it life, does. I so. still play a lot of basketball as an adult, too. Yeah. It's Can't, fun, bro. It, it's fun, bro. It's some of the best cardio you can, to me. Oh, for sure, bro. For do, sure, bro. bro. It's some of the most fun I have all week, too. Yeah, just it's like, fun. Yeah, 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 bro. It's generally fun. To compete and to lock in. Like, I play such good defense as an adult. I'm yeah. just like pride myself and i feel like i play better defense now than what i did when i was young for sure (laughs) (laughs) that's crazy i didn't really know you just don't know as a kid i was so nervous of being embarrassed and i was kind of (laughs) slow hadn't quite figured out the footwork so you just like it's a terrible experience no for sure. but now i know when i step up that like i'm gonna play good defense i'm not scared Mm -hmm. one thing i learned is to attack on defense to like step into their space Mm -hmm. and to be attacking their dribble with my like Mm -hmm. you know coach carter's like this hands for the passing lane this hands for the crossover (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. I never like used that hand yeah. for the crossover, but when I that that really changed defense for me. What, putting pressure on people, bro. Yeah. Like, oh shit! Don't don't put the ball right there, boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking that shit, bro. I'm right there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and rebounding too. I love blocking out, getting a good Boxing rebound. Out, yeah. Then you know, I, I it's stuff you appreciate as a kid, but now as an adult, I'm like, that's the fucking game is yeah. rebounding. Now kids. you gotta use that shit. Actually, now you gotta really box brother. Brother. I out. have to box someone out. Yeah. yeah. Cause you ain't as well. I mean, I know I'm not as quick as I was when I was younger. So it's yeah. crazy. I, I as think soon as I'm, someone shoots, I'm boxing out, bro. You ain't getting by that rim, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I do think I'm in the best shape of my life, probably. If not, I could be in six months, and I'm like right there, you know. Yeah. So I'm playing better basketball than I've ever played in my life, yeah. which also makes it enjoyable, yeah. you know. Like the game's still opening up to me, and I'm still finding new ways to use the same shit that I've been doing forever. Just yeah. seeing new stuff. I don't know. It's a weird thing though to be an adult that plays. I'm I'm like on the LA Fitness All Pro team, you know. <laughs> I like I got like honors for the LA Fitness <laughs> League, but that's such a cliche, you know. They've yeah. made fun of those guys on Twitter for a really long time. Hey, LA Fitness guy, they got some ballers though. I'm one of them. You know? <laughs> so, no, they 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 can hoop. They can hoop, bro. So there's two different LA Fitnesses. There's like five or probably probably like eight LA Fitnesses in San Antonio. God, that's crazy. Right. God, San Antonio is fucking huge, bro. It's huge, bro. San Antonio is huge, it's, dog. It's so large, but it's also so small at the same mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Everybody fucking knows everybody, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. No, for sure. It, I mean, it's a lot bigger than Austin. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? San Antonio. Way bigger. Way bigger. It's like probably almost double, almost twice the size. Mm-hmm. But it's just so much, but it's just so different. Mm-hmm. It's just so, which, which I like, bro, you know? I, I like, love San Antonio. Yeah, man. I'm simple, though. I'm, I'm sure I love pretty much anywhere I live, as long as it has a gym. <laughs> <laughs> gym and some good restaurants. We'll, we'll go to the yeah. uh, to the two LA Fitnesses, and one of them has, like, a game where there's high school kids that want to play in college, some mm-hmm. kids that just went to college, and they're, like, you know, they're young. Yeah. And then there's a game where there's, like, 30-year-olds, like, 30, 30-year-olds show up <laughs> for this game. <laughs> and uh, it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays from 4 to 8 Man. at this other LA Fitness. Yeah. And I, once I found that gym, I was like, bro, this is it. This is it. Yeah. The days and the times. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> they got a fucking Facebook group and shit. <laughs> they do. They do. I'm not invited to that. I'm sure I could now, but yes. I've been going there for, like, 18 months. I've been playing yeah. with that group of people, you know? That's cool, though. It's cool. Now, now you know them and shit. And yeah. You know. Dap them up and stuff. Yep. That's tight, There bro. was one day, like, two months ago where... I got a cut, and then I went to go play basketball like afterwards, mm-hmm. and I showed up, and everybody's just like, what's up, my dog? Hey. <laughs> like, everybody. I was like, okay, man, this is cool, man. They fucking know me. This is cool, yo. And I was like, wait a minute, yo. I'm like, oh, it's the dap. They're like, hey, man, you want to run? I'm like, yes. This is tight. I don't have to wait for a game or nothing, bro. It's crazy. Same for us the cut, dog. The cut is wonders, dude. It's the door is open up. It's insane. <laughs> but no. commercial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, my camera with y'all? Uh, no, we got five. <laughs> so like, Should I go get a haircut? Go get a haircut real quick. Come back. It's Dang. like, bro, team captain. <laughs> so who's your squad? Can I roll with you? Yeah. That's a, hey, that's a skit, bro. That's, that's a good a skit, skit, bro. Dog. Can I roll with you, dog? That's a skit, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. No, but it's real because it's like, you know, when you're new to a gym, sometimes it's hard to get picked up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like good Most at basketball, definitely. but it's still hard 100%. to get picked up, brother. It, it, it's like when... <laughs> it's funny, bro. Like it's a mini combine. <laughs> when, yeah, exactly. Like you just, the, when you're new to the gym, like, you know how you're warming up, shooting and shit. You, hey, you gotta make sure you, you're hitting, bro. Cause motherfuckers are looking, bro. Everybody's looking, dog. Cause I know I'm I like when I see someone shooting on the other side, I'll, I'll be, you know, I'll be playing, but I'll be like, kind of like, you know, didn't make it. Damn, no, like, okay. he's pretty good, bro. Yeah. He's, he's like, hit like three in a row already. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you know, and if motherfuckers just bricking, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he don't look like he's too good. You know, like, I ain't passing him the ball. You know what I'm saying? Hell he ain't gonna no. pick you. Then you ain't gonna get picked, dog. No, bro, for real. So them them little warm up shots is like a combine. You know it's what I'm important, you got, bro. You're all fucking pressured and shit, dude. I walk in and I'm just fucking like. <laughs> 
Doing big high knees, jumping up, squatting down. There's a leg swings and shit. Yeah. They're like, we ain't picking this motherfucker. Yeah, this, this guy's go, oh, sweat mode. Dude, I ball. I ball for real. But I'll get it. Some of the best thing that ever happened to me was not getting picked because I come into the next game and I'm just like, you, you are the person. You get that chip. Yeah, yep. for real. Like, yep. you're not scoring anything, bro. Yep. Sorry about it. And then that's earned me respect. <laughs> for sure. In the long run was sure. every time someone slided me, I just shut them the fuck hey, down. Got turned negative into positive, bro. Yeah, facts. <laughs> and now those people, they know too. They're like, hey, you better pick him, dog. It's going to be a problem yeah. later. Yeah. You know? Yeah, pick no, that one sure. nah. Or like, or like if, uh, one thing was like, if, uh, you, you know, you get picked last, that's also like a good little motivator. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you're like, all right, bitch, I'm about to Brock Purdy this motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. And then the next game, they're like, all right, yeah, we got that guy. That's like, a steal. You know? Yep. So no, that's cool, man. That's funny, bro. It's all like the same, similar kind of stories. Pick up basketball culture. <laughs> it, yep. is, it is, bro. It is. Yeah. It is, and I feel weird as an adult because it's like, you know, what are we, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, fuck that shit. It's, it's serious business. It's fun, bro. <laughs> There's there leagues, bro. Yep, Motherfuckers in business. leagues, bro. <laughs> so many leagues. It is. Oh man. I think we, I need it as a person. Man, we need a hoop one day, man. I dude, I'm we'll, down. Need to do it, bro. It'd be awesome. No. We'll find out the sure. time. Maybe we can podcast and then hoop after the podcast or something. Hey, something, bro. Something. Get some content of that. Where do you go? Are you go to Golds? You yeah, I go to Golds, oh, okay. man. Golds. And then um, yesterday I went and played at a at a school out here in Buda, Johnson High. One of my friends had a. He just started coaching over there, so he gets the gym open. Nice. Uh, Sundays ten ten to twelve, and uh, yeah, it's like thirty olds go up there. A couple like tw- a couple like mid twenty twenty year old cats go there too. But yeah. It was uh we played yesterday. I lost the first run, and then the last four run we run we won. So like that, it was it was a good day yesterday. Hell yeah, it's a good day, bro. It's a good day, it's bro. A good day, it's bro. a good day. It's a good day, bro. <laughs> Honestly, it changes your brain chemistry, bro. If you yep. win a bunch, yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm a winner. But <laughs> 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 if you go out there and get your ass kicked, you just take four yeah. L's in a row. It's like, oh, I fucking suck, bro. Yeah. Why would I do this? My feet hurt, bro. What the fuck? I got blisters and shit. It's like a drug, but like downward. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck that. I hate that feeling, bro. So fucking, I don't know. Nah, start sitting, start sitting the different spots. You don't sit with this guy because they've been losing all. Yeah. all Dude, I know it can't be too friendly. They're gonna pick you up. You run with us, right? <laughs> Dude, I, I'll, I'll switch teams fast for if it's a faster game. If like oh, some Durant shit. <laughs> if they're like, yeah, man, we're three games out, and the guy's like, you want to run next with us? I'm like. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Can't wait to play <laughs> basketball, dude. Let's go. Take my challenge to South Beach. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, bro. But it's I, real, though. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, I'm trying to play, bro. I'm just the trying time, to play. Yeah, yeah bro. Wait an hour. You can sit yeah. 40 minutes before you get on the bitch. Yeah, dog. I try to do abs and shit if I'm sitting too long. <laughs> some planks, some crunches. Mm-hmm. I'm, I usually I'll shoot around, bro. If I'm not playing, I'm, I'm shooting or dribbling just to keep myself, you know, warm and you in know, the rhythm yeah in the rhythm bro because mm-hmm. then that's when i start to like get off a of rhythm you know yeah coming in cold mm-hmm. all tight like oh shit i sat down for too long yep son of a bitch yep you've been yeah. doing basketball since as a kid but um and we are probably probably getting towards the end of our footage we're right about there yeah we're about there but one one last question for you basketball you loved it as a kid first mm-hmm. passion first love you're still pursuing it still finding um you know something valuable in there right. as an adult but is there something that you picked up as an adult that you find a lot of value in that you didn't pick up as a kid something kind of um, like recently? reading really reading bro yeah and i know it's such a fundamental thing you know to most human beings but i didn't really read a lot growing up you know what i'm saying yeah if I can and uh, same. but yeah that's that, that is definitely something that i picked up as an adult that a course has you know opened up my mind tremendously you yeah. know um so yeah reading bro you mean like a, do you have a top five books uh not as an entrepreneur but just top as, five as a books person. man my my main book that i like to read a lot and i like to read over and over because one it's short bro but it, it it holds so much uh value to me it's called um the S- seven spiritual, spiritual laws yeah 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 that's the one bro i read that i could <laughs> that's the like one. For, for a minute bro i was reading that bitch like fucking maybe six seven five or six days out the week bro you know cause yeah. it's a short book Super you know short, what i'm saying yeah. but it just has so much uh so much value and so much yeah, fucking like it's deep it's deep bro mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and uh yeah bro, that's probably my my favorite but that that and uh uh rich dad poor dad okay yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. What did you like about Rich Dad Poor Dad so much? Um, that one, bro. I think as a business owner, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's just um, it and and just finances as well. It, all that ties into that book, you know. So, um, 
I really like to read that one just because of it. Sometimes like I'll read it, I'll read that book one time and I'll miss something. So I'll read it the second time and I'll pick something else up on it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I think it's just extremely valuable for cats like us, you know what I'm saying? That are in yeah. that, that are in that world, you know, that entrepreneurial world, you know, um, hearing the stories of how he was, when he was young, how he, you know, he started, you know, uh, with his own little business, him and his partner and, you know, his, uh, his perspectives from his dad and his friends, his friend's dad, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think that's super dope, you know, um, you know, his dad is like super like college and school oriented and his friend's dad who is, uh, you know, dropped out, of, dropped out of fucking, I think middle school or some kind of shit like that, mm -hmm. um, who became like super successful, you know, entrepreneurial, yeah. you know, uh, uh, financial, financially free, you know, uh, it's cool to, to, uh, you know, hear both spectrums from that guy, from Robert, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember. I, I never read that one, but I think I listened to it on audiobook. Okay, and it, it, it was super tight. Yeah, yeah. It was super tight. No, it's dope, bro. It's dope. It's yeah. Have, have you have you read? have you read it? I've or? heard about it. People talk about it all the time. I haven't read it though. Read it, bro. It's, yeah, it's, it's tight, man. I think that that's the that's the book that really got me into reading. Really? Was that nice. was that book, bro? I read it when I was like the first time I read it was. I don't know. I think I was like twenty, twenty six, twenty seven. Mm hmm. Yeah. Every time I'm reading a, like a book and I'm into the book, I'm like, dude, why do I ever not read? Yeah. You know? And then, but like right now I'm not currently reading anything and it's just like. And, and you know, it happens, bro. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, uh, when I was doing that 75 hard challenge, yeah. um, that's when I was really, really reading super heavy. It's part of the challenge. It's part read, of the right? challenge. Yeah. 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 You gotta, uh, you gotta read 10 pages of, uh, of a book, you know, every day. It has to be like a, has to not, has to be a, a book of uh, something that's going to give you value. It can't be like no, you know, Comic nonfiction book. book or anything like no, no Harry Potter book or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, valuable shit in there. No, I'm just there's, kidding, some, there's some truths in that motherfucker. <laughs> it has to be a self development. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with book, you. Bro. So, yeah, no, nah, but that's cool, man. No, nah, I'm into that. Um, <clears throat> reading, reading, reading. I, I love to read before I go to bed. If I, it's the best time. instead of watching TV, if I just like shower, lay down with the book mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to read until I fall asleep, I yep. sleep so much better. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. And, um, and I would kill books, bro. I read Tim Tebow's, I think he has two books. I think I read both of them in like less than a month just because mm. I was like, you read 10 pages and I'd be like, nah, we're like still going. Let me mm -hmm. do another chapter or mm -hmm. something. You know what I'm saying? Cause I think that was something I said too, was like, just do 10 pages a night just cause I want to read, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that's like a real easy way to make sure i do it almost like a workout and it's yeah. never 10 pages bro yeah it's yeah, always yeah. more it's than always that. more yeah but even if it's just 10 pages bro that's more than most people bro fucking yeah the habit over time too bro you know? yeah that's a lot it adds up it yeah. really does it really does but yeah oh yeah but man, man bro yeah, so chris you want to plug where, where where people can find you at man, socials yeah. this place um, anything everything well uh, we're downtown Kyle, uh, right, right at old, old downtown Kyle. Uh, my Instagram is Chris the Clipper Wiz. Um, uh, that's my personal Instagram and our barbershop Instagram is gentlemen's grooming one on one. And our website is www.gentsgroom101.com. one one dot com. And yeah, man, I mean, what we'll do you plug got all of it in the, the description. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you got going on in the next six months? Anything new and exciting? Uh, uh man, just honestly, bro, uh, I'm trying to, you know, put together a, a, our own um, fucking educational uh, system that I'm trying to put together here, as far as like a haircutting system uh, to to help these to help my barbers and help other barbers in the industry. I want to start like an online like an online course type deal. So I'm trying to work on that, bro. And then just just the uh, the brand. You know, we're doing our rebranding. Uh, you, you know, you're wearing our our new logo. The new I haven't, logo. haven't really like, oh, yeah, new look. we Let's haven't go. put it out there yet, but that's something that I'm working on. Um, the podcast, you know, I want to start. I definitely want to start our own podcast for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, and just just the content, man. You know, the skits, the educational skits, the funny skits. Um, putting together a little mini mini docu documentary, or I guess you if you want to call it, yeah. you know, of myself and the business. And I got a lot of shit I'm I'm working on, bro. You Hell know, yeah, for the bro. next my life <laughs> let's go baby that's about it. six months you know it's just mm -hmm. my hope you know bro this is yeah, it that's it that's this it. is it dog it's all i know you know what i'm saying like when people ask me you know uh when they ask me like man you know what do you what do you do or what do you, what have you been doing like hey cutting hair is all i know bro like i've been doing that since i was 16 years old yeah. you know and uh i mean this is it bro yeah you've been you doing know? it longer than you've been not doing it exactly exactly so 
Yeah, man. Yeah, got a lot That's of tight, got a lot of got a lot of projects going on, bro. I can't wait to see all of them. I love your posts. I love everything you do. I'm a big fan. I appreciate it. Feel like bro. you're yeah, bro, destined for greatness, dude. I yeah, appreciate you, bro. Fuck with you. Hey, hey y'all too, man. man. Y'all too, man. I, I think it's super dope what y'all are doing. You know, I love seeing it. You know what I'm saying, bro. Uh, try to support y'all as, as much as I can, you know, and uh, I'm glad that, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm able to be here on y'all's podcast and, you know, it's a, it's, it's special, you know, it really is, bro. Thank you, bro. And Appreciate I'm happy that, that I'm happy that we're able to, you know, be in each other's circles, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I love that shit. So, hundred percent. Yeah. All right. And ladies and gents, end of the episode 62, tune in for more. Everything is coming out. More <laughs> life, more love. Catch on the flip. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we.